Right, good morning everyone. Welcome to Lincolnshire County Council Planning and Regulation Committee. Uh, it's Monday the 26th of July and it is uh, slightly past 10.30. Uh, small apologies to everybody. We've had a couple of IT issues that we've been resolving um, for people, I, I, people on webcast. I think you can listen to us but you can't actually see us. So uh, apologies for our late starting. Um, for the people in the chamber and for people listening, um, members have been trained with regard to dealing with planning applications, um, so everybody present can make decisions uh, and everyone's happy. We are suitably distanced away from each other in the council chamber um, and indeed we've had a fire alarm uh, practice earlier on, so if the fire alarm goes, please exit the building to the front, to the front of the building behind me and meet in the car park where we'll do a head count. We aren't expecting any issues in that direction though. So without further ado, item one on the agenda is apologies replacement members. I believe I have uh, some apologies from Carl Macy. Um, uh, I think he has some issues that have just cropped up and delayed him. Um, otherwise, uh, I don't see Councillor Pepper and I don't see Councillor Mrs Overton at the moment for the sake of webcasting. Um, otherwise, I think everyone is present. Mike. I, th I think we're missing um, Councillor Hall as well, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Oh, Councillor. So is that better? Excellent. So just to reiterate that, uh, we're now doing with uh, declarations of members' interests. And I was just saying on item 4.1, I have had no uh, contact with the parish council and uh, local parishioners also haven't petitioned me directly. So I believe I can chair this item and be in the meeting to resolve the issue. Um, has anybody else got any declarations? Council Mrs. Oste. Thank you, Chairman. I am both the um, County Councillor and the Boston Borough Council for the final item 7.1, um, the Boston Alternative um, Energy Facility. Um, over the th three years, well, since 2018, there have been a number of public and um, member consultations which I have attended but um, I have not discussed this application with anyone um, so I come into it with an open mind thank you thank you very much anybody else need to declare Councillor Skinner thank you chairman um, just like Councillor Austin um, I am a Boston member but I'm also the leader of Boston Borough Council. Uh, I come into this with a, an open mind. Should I, should I feel that there's a problem, I will declare it at the time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor uh, Ashton. Uh, thank you. Um, in respect of item uh, 7.1, as just discussed, I'm a member of Boston Borough Council. I have received members' briefings um, around this issue, but I haven't um, engaged um, or given any indication of my position um, on the matter, and I come with an open mind. Um, County matter 5.1, um, today's agenda, uh, no, 6.1, sorry. I am the local member for Tattershall Thorpe, and with your leave, Mr Chairman, I will speak as um, ward member on that item and not take part in the vote. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Seeing none, I will therefore move on to... Uh, the third item on the agenda, which is the minutes, and this is of the meeting held on the 5th of July 2021. I'm quite happy to move them as a, an accurate record. Do I have a seconder anywhere? Uh, 
Councillor Ashley Morris is second it. Thank you. Um, and I assume that we can receive these and everyone can agree to them. OK, I see no defaulters, so I'm happy with that. OK, so we'll move therefore on to the traffic items. Uh, and the first one is 4.1 Bardney Silver Street proposed waiting restrictions. So uh, um, I will therefore uh, move on to calling Jan Gibson, programme leader, to present the report. Thank you, Chairman. I'm Jan Gibson, programme leader for Minor Works and Traffic. The first report today is for proposed waiting restrictions at Bardney. So the proposal is on Silver Street, which is the main route in and out of the village to the east. We're proposing double yellow lines as shown in red at Appendix B. The reason for these is to facilitate the flow of traffic at this pinch point between the traffic island to the west and where the road, the carriageway narrow, narrows to the east. And these photographs illustrate that um, distinct narrowing there. It has been observed that, <coughs> excuse me, has been observed that traffic on occasion is held up at this point, particularly larger vehicles and agricultural vehicles, and then traffic um, is backing up on Horncastle Road. So we've had a petition comprising 97 signatures and two objections to these proposals um, on the basis that they will restrict on-street parking, which will affect local businesses, and also that on-street parking um, restricts traffic flow and therefore slows traffic down. The Parish Council was consulted and their, their statement is in the report. I'd just like to clarify that the Parish Council did not request an investigation for waiting restrictions at this location. Um, they did ask us to look at other locations in the village, which we monitored, but found no issue and could not justify restrictions. However, we felt that restrictions were justified at this location for the reasons stated. So in response to the objections, we believe that the maintenance of traffic flow, particularly for the agricultural vehicles and larger vehicles through here, is, is paramount. That the restriction on parking um, is minimal in that there is elsewhere to park on Horncastle Road and Silver Street. And therefore, the recommendation is that members overrule the objections received so that the order can be made operative. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I know this site very well, and if you could re rewind the pictures back for me a couple of shots, that one will do me nicely. That is a pinch point. The building to the right-hand side, I don't know, 50 years ago, used to be a chemist shop. The building to the left-hand side was the billiards room. Um, these are now both residential Um and the, it, because of that, at this pinch point, uh, t uh, looking back behind where you are standing to the rear of you, about two miles down the road, a mile and a half down the road, is the Omex fertiliser factory, which brings a lot of articulated vehicles through the village, uh, carrying liquid fertiliser. Um, obviously, the farming operations around do come through here, and as you can see, there is quite a restriction with regard to uh, this location. I therefore support the uh, uh, proposed traffic restriction and I will quite happily move the recommendation. Would anybody else like to speak? Councillor Skinner. I think it looks eminently sensible and I'm prepared to second it. Thank you, Chairman. Do we have any other speakers? So therefore I will offer it to the vote. All in favour, please show now. Oh, there was a, hang on. There was another speaker, Councillor Smith. I am. Thank you, Chairman. I will be very brief. Uh, the report touches on um, the, the problems people with disabilities will have, but actually, because they are double yellow lines that will be in place, if you have a blue badge, you are entitled to park on them for a limited period of time. So I think that objection is mute, a moot point, uh, and I also support the recommendation. Thank you for those comments. I will therefore take it to the vote, seeing nobody else wishing to speak. All in favour, please show now. And I believe that is unanimous. But I will say anybody against and any abstentions. 
No, that is unanimous and carried through. Okay, next application is 4.2 Lincoln Westgate proposed zebra crossing facility. Um, again, uh, Jan, when you're ready, please. Thank you, Chairman. So this proposal is for approval for a zebra crossing facility on Westgate in Lincoln. So we're in the uphill area of the city. Westgate um, Academy sits to the north and a car park used by parents to drop off and pick up school children is to the south of Westgate. The road hump highlighted in red on Appendix B is used as an informal crossing point by pedestrians, um, shown here. And we carried out a pedestrian crossing survey at this point and a score of 0.73 was achieved. Now, we need 0.8 for a zebra crossing facility against the policy, but in that policy, members are able to sanction a crossing if the score received lies within 10% of the score required. This is the case at this location. A road safety audit was completed recently and found no issues um, with a zebra crossing at this location. The recommendation, therefore, is that the committee takes advantage of the flexibility in the policy and approves the feasibility study, design and installation of a zebra crossing at this location. Thank you. Would, would you like to speak, Councillor Parker? <coughs> Certainly. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, <coughs> as, Jan said, as Jan Gibson said, the origins of this request go back to June 2019 when a parent contacted me, um, <clears throat> parent was a risk manager and she felt um, concern about potential road safety difficulties outside the school, both at the start of the <clears throat> school day and at the end of the school day. Highways officers and also um, Road Safety Partnership and myself met um, and initially it was thought that a, a longer railing outside the school would be a protective mechanism um, but that was quickly discounted and a zebra crossing was seen as the, um, as the best available solution. So two years on, um, for, for, and this paper is, is now making a recommendation which I <coughs> and the head teacher, James Kellick, support. The, the head teacher, um, Mr Kellick, said that he regularly gets comments from parents about near misses um, because of the traffic which can be substantial at the beginning and end of the school day outside the school. As Jan said, um, <coughs> the car park that's most often used by, the, by parents dropping off is on the other side of the road from the school, so there is this um, need to get across the road and, and children don't always behave as we, as we want them to. Um, Westgate is a busy urban road um, and it's there. what we've got is a mixture of parents delivering children by car and parents walking their children to school. So there's a, a conflict r regularly. So uh, I'm here to urge the um, planning committee to, um, to take advantage of the discretion that's available when a, <coughs> a reading falls below 0.8%. This is 0.73%, and I urge the committee to back the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Parker. Uh, would anybody like to speak to the application? I know this site very well myself. It's uh, one of the cut-throughs that I would dare to say I use coming down to the County Council on occasion. Um, a lot of uh, public services use this route because uh, it's more convenient to come down Spring Hill and avoid the town centre on occasion. Uh, the hump is quite substantial, uh, so the existing hump is uh, quite, quite a unit, so it does detract vehicles from going quickly but I would support the concept of a, a pedestrian crossing at this location. Uh, looking around, would anybody else like to comment? Councillor Ashton. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'm very happy to lend my support on this occasion. If you're moving, I'm happy to second. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak? Okay, so I'll therefore put it to the vote. Um, this one has been uh, that the committee considers the criteria set out in the pedestrian crossing policy and supports submission of a funding bid for a feasibility study, design and installation of zebra crossing at this location. So all in favour of that, please show now. And 
that is unanimous. But I will say anybody against uh, and any abstentions. And seeing no hands going up, that one is also carried. OK, let's move on to the next one, which is uh, 4.3 Lincolnshire Coast proposed off-street parking places order at Hutoft. And this is the Hutoft Terrace car park. So uh, again, if I can have an officer introduction by Jan, please. Thank you, Chairman. So this order is a proposed off-street parking places order to cover a number of car parks on the east coast of Lincolnshire, as indicated at Appendix A. Um, five car parks between Chapel St. Leonard's and Sutton on C. If we just run through the appendices, no, most northerly one is Hutoft, down to Mogsai and Marsh Yard, Andover Creek, Wallabank, and Six Marshes. So the proposal is to introduce this, this order, which will have the restrictions shown on this type of sign. So this is a, a piece of artwork of the sign that we would potentially use should this uh, proposal be approved. And it details the restrictions on the order, such as it will be the car, all these car parks will be closed between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. throughout the entire year. Then between Good Friday and the 31st of October, charges will be levied between 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day. The remainder of the year, there will be no charges. There are also some additional restrictions on the types of vehicle allowed to use the car parks. Caravans, heavy goods vehicles, trailers, and vehicles over six metres in length will be prohibited. The method of payment will be a cashless system, pay by phone, so if you have a smartphone, you can download the app. Other mobile phones, you can set up, register the phone and use texting. And alternatively, you can call the number given at the bottom of the sign. Now, the purpose of this order is to try and regulate and manage the large numbers of vehicles wishing to use these car parks, which are extremely popular. And the car parks themselves are difficult to navigate um, as they tend to be overused and often larger vehicles will park up and take up several spaces and there have been issues with waste being left overnight by motorhomes. There have been a number of, quite a number of objections to this proposal. Um, local residents and regular users of the car parks um, are, are concerned that they won't be able to visit the beach for free, they visit the beaches for exercise, to walk dogs, for the pursuits, do volunteering, and they, re they resent having to pay for that. Um, there's concerns that there's, this penalises those on low incomes, um, and also those who don't have access to a mobile phone. They would prefer to see the cash machines, the card machines, sorry, that we're used to, um, in other car parks and we've had quite a few objections from anglers who use Hutoft in particular for an overnight fishing and the operating hours of course close these car parks overnight. So in response to these objections we would say that the times when the charges apply are there to benefit those who are local to the area because they can still get to the sites early and late. So the charges will be levied just around the middle part of the day in the afternoon. So they could also, they can still visit those sites for free before and after the times where we charge. Um, in response to apply, uh, use the use of card machine equipment, this equipment's very expensive. We don't have electricity supply to all the sites and we are concerned that those types of machines will be damaged um, at great expense. So the, the benefit of the cashless parking is that we can just use signs at these locations. They're remote, they're not protected by CCTV. Signs are relatively inexpensive to replace. We recognise the impact on overnight fishing. 
but should this scheme go ahead, the council intends to set up a permit system um, for anglers which will exempt them from overnight parking, but there is likely to be a charge for these permits in future. So bearing these points in mind, the recommendation is that the committee considers the objections but resolves to overrule them in support of these proposals. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, again, I've visited this site as a, uh, I don't know, a tourist. <laughs> can you be a tourist from Lincoln to Skegness? I think you can. I've visited uh, Hutoff, certainly, and uh, some of the other sites along there as a tourist and uh, witnessed various vehicles doing bits and pieces. Um, I will say I've not witnessed anybody leaving litter there, but uh, uh, I do hear that it is an ongoing issue with regard to longer stay vehicles and overnight people. Uh, so I'm quite happy to um, actually move the recommendation for this, um, uh, that we overrule the objections mm -hmm. uh, so that the, uh, the proposal can be made operative. Would anybody like to speak to it? Uh, Councillor Mrs Newton. Thank you. It's the query, Chairman. Um, I was just thinking about the overnight anglers. How do they, if oh, how do they get in touch with us? Do they, if they just turn up um, the first time, presumably they find out they're not supposed to park. Uh, but in advance, how do we get in touch with them, or where are they likely to park? Because if they've arrived from somewhere, they're probably not likely to go home. So where are they going to park and then walk and leave their vehicles? Are they going to be a nuisance to locals? Thank you. Thank you. So although this order does um, allow us to issue a penalty charge notice to people who park, it doesn't physically stop anybody using the car parks or turning up and parking within them. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the what anglers will do. We intend to publicise this. They're already aware of it, I think, and they've passed the information round uh, amongst themselves, so they are aware of what potentially could happen here. Um, in the interim, I think they won't be able to um, come and fish because there won't be anywhere to park. Um, but we do hope, if this system goes in, that we will be able to provide a permit system for them quite quickly, certainly by the early next year. Thank you. Well, I think it needs addressing because we don't want to be giving out signals that you're not welcome in Lincolnshire, do we? Particularly if people are coming from away, if they've travelled a long way. And I know a lot of people do like sea fishing. So um, I think I'm, I'm sure we can leave it to you or somebody, Chairman, to make sure that we get on top of this. Well, I'm sure that if it's tourism, uh, it can go back to the portfolio holder and the portfolio holder can look at how they address the issue. I believe the portfolio holder is also a local member for this area, so uh, it allows them to make that balance. Councillor Ashton. Thank you. I'm just interested in respect to the permits as to why um, they're not going to be available until next year and, 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 and why they can't be introduced as part of the original scheme, as I imagine this has been quite some time being worked out and also whether or not it would be possible to allow um, for permits uh, potentially for local people. Um, I mean, I, th th there is a degree of concern that this may discriminate against older people um, who are not um, as adept at negotiating um, the booking system as perhaps we would like them to be, um, and particularly if they haven't got a smartphone. Obviously, there are options in place um, to, to, to get around that, but uh, certainly for if there is an option for local people to buy a permit, um, that would at least uh, give them some comfort that they haven't got to um, telephone and buy their parking over the phone every time they go. Thank you, Councillor Ashton. Um, we've been instructed to put this order in at quite short notice, so there hasn't really been time to deal with the issue of the angling permits, but we will try and deal with that as soon as we can. We also don't have any mechanism by which we can issue permits to residents or regular visitors at this time, but I think... 
um, we'll be monitoring the situation, see how the scheme goes if it goes in, and over time it may be that these features can be added to the scheme. Thank you. I, I, would sh I share the same concerns as Councillor Ashton, certainly around the equalities bit, you know, for local people. Um, I don't know whether or not there are any um, barriers restricting heights of vehicles going in on all of these, but I, I suspect the main problem for things at the moment is the fact that there's a bit of a wild camping craze and it seems uh, quite... You know, you're excluding people for the, for the behaviours of others, and uh, that doesn't quite seem right and doesn't sit well with me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, it seems to me we should be saying loud and very clear that Lincolnshire is open for business, and that's tourism, a huge amount of it. And this seems to be, well, we're shutting it and then we'll look at what we can do to reopen it. I would suggest it was possible to put a very clear notice at each of these car parks that in a couple of months' time, you'll be required to whatever we sort of decide in the way of permits and parking. That way, it's we're open for business and people have got plenty of notice. People come from a huge distance because where I am in Boston and with our campsite, we get people that stop and then go down, particularly to Anderby Creek. We have quite a group of people that do that. For night fishing, people think Lincolnshire is terrific for that. And we really don't want to be saying, well, we have to stop this and then we'll think about starting it. I'm really, really keen that we perhaps delay this until we can make it crystal clear. Let's say, uh, I, would, I would say a couple of months so that people have got time to see that there will be a change, but not just bang in a change, um, which shuts everything. And people will park elsewhere. There's plenty of places in Anderby Creek. I would imagine the cafe will be lumbered with people parking there and walking up to the beach. Well, I think we're not looking at the bigger picture, and certainly we're not looking at how attractive we, these places are, and that we need to keep them. That's just my thoughts on it. OK, we are dealing with really a traffic restriction here, a proposed um, off-street parking order, not actually tourism. So just trying to bring you two back to the topic. Councillor Mrs Rossi. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry, I'm sitting behind you, so I'm not in your line of vision. I can move, I think, shortly. Um, to me, this seems premature. Uh, is my speaker working? Yes. yes. It, it seems premature that um, things like permits haven't been considered and um, we really need to get everything in order or, you know, set up and then bring this back to the committee and see that it is um, what we want, what we think is right. But I, I don't feel comfortable. Tourism is important and night fishing isn't my scene, but it is the scene for a lot of people. And therefore, these considerations should have been taken into account. Um, so, you know, that, that, is my, that is my feeling. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe online I've got uh, the local member, Councillor Davy, who would like to address the committee. Uh, so if we can introduce Councillor Davy, it would be useful. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I've listened to the comments and I just want to say the following. We have been dealing with um, considerable problems on these sites now for a number of years. We have lost um, tens of thousands of pounds as barriers that we've erected have been cut down and, uh, and not, we haven't been able to replace them. So uh, I'm aware of the issues that are being raised by members, but this is, as you have rightly said, Chairman, about a traffic order. Um, I am absolutely clear that we will have a permit system for fishermen and I don't intend for it to be left until next year. I made it crystal clear I want that introduced as soon as possible. Um, as a local member, uh, as a local member, we have huge problems here on the coast with management of these sites, which have become ever increasingly popular. Um, as you've already indicated, we've had traffic problems, particularly at Hotoff Car Park. 
uh, with the um, camper vans taking up all the bays, restricting local people and other visitors from using them. So we do need some traffic orders, uh, but I can assure the committee the issue of permits will be addressed and addressed quickly. Uh, and the management of these sites to grow the COSEC economy is absolutely part of my portfolio. And I have absolutely every intention of them being used properly and for the benefit of residents and visitors alike in the years ahead. And I'm quite clear there'll be even more visitors uh, visiting these places in the future. That's why we need to manage them. And that's why this um, item today is about that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Davey. Right, um, I don't have anybody else wishing to speak. I, Councillor Mrs Newton. Thank you. I hear what Councillor Davey says, and uh, I think it really supports what uh, most of us have been saying, that we think there's a bit of a problem and we might have got the cart before the oss here. Um, I do think we could probably defer it for a couple of months until they get these permits in order so that more of us would be satisfied that it will happen. I don't think I'm comfortable. We'll do it as soon as we can um, because that means, well, we'll get round to it sometime. I think it's more urgent than that from what Councillor Davies saying. And if it is urgent, um, let's defer it either to our next meeting or let's do it to our next meeting and see if they've got this system organised. That's my proposal anyway, that it's deferred until we can be assured that permits for locals and fishermen are in hand. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Um, I have already proposed the report as printed. I'm looking for a seconder for either of those two options. So, um, and nobody's wishing to speak. Councillor Smith. Thank you. Oh. I am up, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I too, um, as I was reading the report, was very uncomfortable with the, the issue of how it would affect locals and those that would use it at night. Uh, so I'm quite happy to propose uh, the deferment, Chairman. So I'm asking if there is uh, anybody else that would wish to second uh, the paper going through today in accordance with the printed recommendation. And I don't see anybody in the room. So therefore, the proposal by Councillor Miss Newton uh, and seconded by Councillor Smith is that the item is deferred until the next meeting so that uh, further information can be brought back with regard to how the report uh, goes forwards. All in favour, please show now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is uh, most members of the committee. Those against, that's me. So I will vote against that. Um, uh, and there are no abstentions. So on the basis of 9-4, it will therefore come back to the next meeting with additional information. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, I believe that is the end of the uh, traffic items. Thank you, Jan, for doing the uh, paperwork for us and indeed coming to council <laughs> members are officers are get, presumably getting used to coming back to work following being uh, working from home quite a bit uh, and i'm just doing a little bit of a fill here while mr willis takes his chair uh, and i believe we have mr mcbride online as well uh, assisting i don't know who's assisting who but we'll we'll see given a period of time so whenever you're ready, Mark, just give me a nod. Yep. Thank you. So therefore, we'll move on to County Matters Applications, uh, which is item 5, and 5.1 for the sidetrack side drilling operation for, from the existing borehole at Saltfleet BB's well site. Uh, and this is application N stroke 158 stroke 1011 stroke 21. So uh, if I can office, uh, have an officer introduction, please. Yes, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Good morning, members. My name is Mark Willis. I'm the Applications Manager uh, working in the planning section. As you say, this paper takes us to um, a proposal for a sidetrack uh, lateral drill from the existing Salt Fleet B uh, well site in South Cockrington. Um, the proposal is to target uh, a currently un unaccessible reserve of gas, uh, which is located approximately 1,500 metres to the southwest of the existing 
field. It's intended that the reserves estimated to produce around 5.2 billion cubic metres of gas. Development would take place within six phases within the, uh, the site, totaling around 16 weeks in total. I'll just draw your attention to the slides. This is just a, a first slide showing the location plan of the site. It's an existing, well-established oil uh, gas site, which comprises of two areas bisected by a drain. Um, on screen yet. So you can see this is the, the main access route and this is the site of the proposal itself. This slide just gives you a bit more detail. The, the site, as I say, comprises an area that's currently operational and an area that uh, has previously been drilled with three boreholes here. Um, the proposed location for the lateral drill would be uh, site seven, which is the central one in this plan here. As I say, the proposal would be to bring on a drilling rig um, for a period of time to drill the well, um, and then an area, a, a period of well testing with analysis, and then ultimately removal. It all takes place within an existing footprint within the existing site, which, as I say, comprises of a concrete pad, and I'll bring some photos up to just represent that in a moment. Um, with the operations, again, taking place um, other than the drilling aspect, Monday to Friday, 7 till 7, Saturday, 7 till 1. The tallest element would be the drill rig itself, uh, which would take place within um, the, the actual lateral drilling phase, so that it would be around four, no more than 40 metres height, its maximum point, uh, with the associated in infrastructure around it. This picture uh, just gives you an idea of a distance view of the existing site. You can see the site benefits from existing landscaping around the majority of its perimeter. And taking the photos top left to right, uh, this just gives a bit of a pan image across the site, as I say. So the first top left shows you a, an image of the location of the drill pad, uh, where the existing wells are located and where this would take place bottom left picture just shows you the central drain which uh, bisects the two parts of the existing well site and the bottom right this shows you the existing infrastructure associated with the existing activity. Taking to the report, um, the consultation responses are set out on um, pages 68 and 69. Uh, there's been no objections from the Environment Agency and the Highways Agency, um, like Highways uh, Team shall I say, or HSE. There's no objections equally raised from the District Council. Five representations have been received. They're set out in the report on page 69. Those concerns relate to the impacts of noise uh, and lighting, traffic, and also concerns about this being contrary to perhaps um, the net zero pledge for the County Council in terms of uh, energy use going forward. In terms of the report's uh, conclusions, pulling it all together at the end of the report, so this is an established uh, gas production site that's been in, in operation for well over 20 years. The proposal seeking to access and exploit new reserves by a lateral drill um, within the existing footprint. Um, that will release hydrocarbons. However, um, there's an a realisation that there's still a need to maintain a supply of hydrocarbons whilst we transition through to a, a lower carbon um, energy use of the future. It's accepted within the report there'll be short-term visual impacts associated in particular with the drilling phase, which is, say, is phases two and five. However, um, all the other elements would largely be um, temporary and removable. And from the environmental impacts aspects of it, noise levels have been assessed during the drilling phase, given its relatively remote location from properties. Any noise levels expected are uh, expect, uh, been assessed as falling within acceptable lev levels. So the recommendation within the report is that the permission be granted subject to the conditions set out on page 74 onwards. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I believe uh, online we have Mr George Lucan, who is the CEO of Angus Energy, who would like to speak in support of the application. The floor is yours, sir, when you are ready. Thanks very much, Chairman. Uh, we're making a representation in support of the application. Uh, the office has, granted planning permission, uh, has recommended granting planning permission with conditions in accordance with the local plan, and we, we, recommend, we, we welcome this recommendation. 
This application is part of a larger project of restoring production at the field following the closure of Thaddeltalk refinery. There are three parts, the pipeline reconnection to the national grid, bypassing Thaddeltalk. That we're, I'd say, 90% through. We're very pleased to have spent over half a million pounds on, on local expertise in civils uh, and pipe work and welding. Uh, the process facilities, uh, which, like the pipeline, has already been approved by uh, the committee, uh, they will be rolled on this year. Uh, we will have 10 full-time employees and we'll be uh, spending a substantial sum of money in county uh, and very happily in country generally, uh, uh, utilising the industrial expertise up in the Humber. Uh, and the last part of, of the jigsaw is this sidetrack. This sidetrack is to uh, accelerate productions from the field in the early years when, when we, we see the greatest need for uh, hydrocarbons uh, and cash flow as Angus, as an entity, pursues its own uh, net zero initiatives, uh, its own transition journey. So it's vitally important to us uh, as, as the third uh, application to, to make, make sense of the commercials of the field uh, and also to enable us to explore uh, some of our uh, geothermal projects. Uh, we're drillers. So that's the route we've taken in terms of our contribution to net zero. We're looking at this field in particular uh, as um, a potential pilot geothermal project using some of the surplus well stock. Uh, but we're also looking outside of the county at much deeper uh, geothermal projects. It's an expensive business. We're going to need cash flow. We're going to need to be able to attract investment. So this, this whole project for us supports our transition uh, into the net zero. Uh, and um, we recommend it uh, to you on that basis. I'd also add we, we, we've used down at Thaddlethorpe the first use of hydrogen-ready pipe uh, in, in, in a commercial connection to National Grid in the UK, uh, and we've uh, also established a connection or establishing a connection with the Uniper Kipps line to the Thaddlethorpe power station. That's quite important. It brings this field into long-term prospects of use in carbon capture, hydrogen storage, or all the other initiatives which we're very pleased to see her being progressed at the Humber. Uh, thank you very much uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak in, in support of the application, Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucan. Before you leave, are there any questions from members of the committee of the applicant? And seeing none, thank you for your attendance. Um, I will therefore um, ask the planning officer if he needs to make any comment. No, I'll therefore open it to committee. Uh, who would like to speak to this application? And we have silence. So uh, <laughs> um, I will therefore move forwards. Um, obviously, you've seen, you've read the report. I hope it's um, 20 pages, 22 pages long. Um, it does identify the site very clearly and what the options are. Uh, obviously assessed very well by the officers, so I'm quite happy to move the report. Uh, Vice Chairman indicating. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It makes a great deal of sense to extend an existing site rather than to begin again um, with a whole new one um, in terms of impact on um, local area and other sensitivities. Um, I'm very happy to second this. It's uh, clearly an important um, resource that we have here in Lincolnshire um, and is um, clearly better for the environment than some other fuels that could be available. So uh, happy to second you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to speak? Okay. Proposed by myself, seconded by Councillor Ashton, that report as printed is followed. Uh, and that is that uh, uh, it is recommended that conditional planning be granted. Uh, all in favour, please show now. Thank you. That is unanimous. But I will ask anybody against any abstentions. Seeing none, that one is therefore granted as printed. Next application is 6.1, which is Household Waste Recycling Centre uh, at uh, Tattershall Thorpe. Application S176007921. Uh, officer introduction, please. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, as you say, this application relates to a proposed replacement Household Waste Recycling Centre um, off Kirkby Lane, Tattershall. 
Uh, the first slide just gives you a, an indication of the broad location. Just to put it in some context, the site itself is located approximately two kilometres south of Kirkby on Bain Village, two and a half kilometres northeast of Tattershall, and 2.2 south of Coningsby. The proposal site comprises of a former landfill area or part of a former landfill area. You can see on the plan here that uh, there's a small section of it that forms part of this application with the wider area being retained. The facility itself is proposed to replace the existing facility, which is located just to the north of this site within the Kirkby on Bain landfill site. It's operated by a, a third party operator. The, that facility is due to close early, later this year, and so the proposal is to establish a new uh, facility that LCC would run and manage itself. Um, the facility would um, comprise of a small-scale facility, common and typical of those that members will be familiar with where that's where around the county. The facility is anticipated to deal with a similar amount of waste that the current facility is, which is around 5,000 tonnes a year and will comprise of uh, a site itself with a central roadway um, area, uh, welfare facility building, attenuation pond. I'll take you through some of the slides. This just gives you an indication of the site layout, as I say, comprised of a typical circular roadway with the uh, canopies and access to the skips within the central location, a welfare facility for members of the staff operation on site, um, and a tenure, surface attenuation pond that would uh, manage surface waters derived from the site and improvements to the existing site access. It's just a, an image there of, a, of, the loca of the welfare building. You see within the report there is an existing access into this site. Improvements are proposed as part of this development to improve um, visibility um, and widening of that access. So this is just a plan showing um, some of the works to that main footprint within the site. You'll see from the report uh, the main areas of concern have been related to the site's former use. As I say, the site was a former um, landfill site that has um, traditionally been used for disposal of a number of materials, but principally sewage sludge and so the site itself comprises of areas of old lagoons uh, separated by earth buns with a, a, a remnant tarmac roadway. And you can just see from here, there's some um, images of the site itself. It's been left untouched for a number of years, so it's now um, largely overgrown, uh, as you can see. In terms of the representations made, you'll see they've been uh, set out within the report on page 88. And as I say, a lot of those objections from, for example, the Parish Council, both Tattershall and Tumby, relate to concerns about the development uh, impacts of this and potential contamination risk that might arise from disturbance and concerns, therefore, about the impacts on the environment. Um, in terms of the uh, application or the proposal itself, the site has had historical um, investigations carried out to identify uh, whether or not the site itself has, in its current form, poses any risk. And those assessments have established that the site in its present form untouched is not showing evidence of um, contamination or leakage within the, the site itself. But rightly, you can see people are concerned about uh, potential disturbance. And so there's been efforts been made to design the site in such a way to minimise the disturbance of the actual well, uh, the, the actual lagoons itself as part of the design. So to do that, um, the site's been designed to be constructed as a concrete platform, which would effectively sit on top of the existing site, thereby, thereby minimising any ground disturbance, such as uh, digging into the, um, the cells of the old lagoons. And it would also act as a means to cap and therefore protect any uh, contamination with materials running into those lagoons or equally running out. The attenuation lagoon that's been proposed for surface water sits outside any area that's been identified as previously having been disturbed. And as I've alluded to, the previous investigations with monitoring um, boreholes have been taken around the site have shown that um, those cells are stable. Um, Within the reports, you can see that the Environment Agency have been consulted and have raised no objection to the proposal. Um, they did make a recommendation that further a remediation strategy be submitted 
um, which is common with regard to contaminated land type developments. Um, at the time that that report was written, a draft or, or an outline remediation strategy being submitted, which had sought to negate the need for that condition. And you'll see from the update that whilst that strategy has been submitted and consulted upon, there's been some suggestions around the revisions to that. So the offer as a recommendation is that those conditions remain in place, therefore ensuring that before any works take place that that remediation strategy covers everything that the agency would expect um, to be covered for such uh, a development. Representations have been received from the members of the public and landowners, and again, they're set out on page 91 of the report. I've already mentioned that a majority of those concerns relate to impacts of the disturbance, um, potential of from this development, concerns about uh, what's contained within the former cells uh, and therefore what risks that pose, um, concerns with regard to increased traffic as well. Um, in terms of, again, so I'll just go through the next slide. Again, these are just some more images really of the site. You can see, uh, again, the top left there, an image of the site in its current undisturbed state. Uh, and then the next few photos, top right is a photo of the existing access, which would be widened. There would be a need to do some clearance, which is made clear within the report along um, the site road boundary, just to ensure that there's suitable visibility. Uh, replacement planting is, however, proposed in the longer term. The bottom left photo is a view north, um, heading back towards where effectively the, new, uh, the existing household waste recycling centre is located and the bottom right is a view south along um, Kirkby Lane. So drawing it all together in the report, as I say, there's been a number of representations received. Um, from an operational perspective, the impacts of this development have been assessed both in terms of noise um, and visual and traffic. I say it's a replacement facility, so um, it's envisaged that the traffic and number of uh, visitors to site would be uh, consistent with that that's been experienced in the past. There's been no objections raised from highway, um, highway officers in respect to the use of this road or the road routes around it, subject to the improvements. Um, the design of the site is common and typical of that which we've used elsewhere within the county. Um, landscaping has been proposed as part of the development to, to help um, minimise and uh, assimilate the development into the open countryside location. Um, in terms of the main issues, as I said, the, the main issues with regard to contamination and risk are noted um, and they have been investigated uh, to a satisfactory level from an officer's perspective. Um, a remediation strategy has been recommended. There's been no overall in principle objection from the Environment Agency or the Environmental Health Section with regard to the future use of this site. Uh, and the conditions that require that remediation strategy to come in will give uh, further safeguards and assurance to ensure that any development, um, before any development takes place on the site, that there's adequate um, understanding controls in place uh, to minimise any impact should that be identified. The site itself is um, an open countryside location. However, that in itself does not um, discount such a, a facility in such locations where they are small scale. This facility, as I say, is small scale and the policy within the Minerals and Waste Local Plan supports small scale facilities in open countryside locations on certain types of land, one of which includes contaminate, previously contaminated land, which as I say, this has been, um, it clearly is. So overall, the location is considered acceptable and it's considered that with the conditions I set out in the report, the development could take place uh, and would comply with the policies in the plan. So it's recommended that permission be granted. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Now, what I didn't say to the last speakers was that we allow uh, three minutes for people to address the committee. Um, and I probably should have done to Mr. Lucan, but he was well within anyway. However, um, in support of this application, I've got Mike Reed, who is Delivery and Transformation Manager Waste, uh, who is going to uh, talk to the meeting uh, via teams so uh, whenever you are ready uh mike the floor is yours thank you chairman uh good morning everyone and thank you for allowing me to speak in suppose of the in, in support of the proposed development i think as mark has has 
very eloquently outlined, this is to replace the existing facility at Kirby on Bain, which is due to close later this year. Uh, if we don't have a, a replacement facility, that is going to represent a big gap in the, the service that we are trying to maintain with regards to household waste. Uh, there is a large population, obviously, in Horncastle, in Coningsby, Woodall Spa, that would then have to travel further afield to dispose of their material. Uh, the nearest sites would be down at Sleaford and Market Brazen, which would represent a, an inconvenience, not only in time, but also in cost in, in driving those extra miles. But I think one thing to, to be mindful of as well is that if, if we don't have a replacement facility, then there could be a, an environmental impact with uh, a, a probable uh, increase in fly tipping in this area. Uh, it's something which has been increasing nationally in the last 12 to 18 months, which may be linked to the pandemic, but it's something which is becoming more of an issue in, in terms of rural communities. And if, if, if that is going to be damaging the environment, that, that's, that's obviously not a, 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 a problem that we want to kind of uh, uh, enhance or add to. So that will be damaging for the environment and also it could be difficult for the uh, district council in terms of collection as they have the requirement to collect fly tips material. So that would impact on their budgets. And briefly just wanted to mention, we do own and operate 10 other facilities of a very similar design around the county. Many are in uh, built up areas where people initially were concerned about implications of such developments, but these have, have never been borne out by um, any of the, the sites that we've then gone on to operate. We do operate under very tight restrictions by the Environment Agency permit that has to re be renewed annually. And that, that does give us a, a lot of confidence that this type of facility, we are, we are good at doing this and we do operate uh, to a very high standard. And in, in terms of neighbourhoods, we have four facilities which have residential properties as immediate neighbours, which have a, a shared boundary, and none of us can recall any issues or complaints with, with in terms of neighbours uh, regarding noise or uh, odours or any environmental issues. So it's, it just demonstrates the, the high standard that we do operate to. We do, we do hear the concerns of the residents, but we have tried to reflect that in the approach of how we will build and operate the facility if we are given the approval. So thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you very much, <coughs> Mr Reid. Anybody got any questions of Mr Reid? Seeing none, uh, is there any comment from Portfolio Holder? Seeing none. Um, uh, I will go to local member in a moment, but I have got Councillor Mrs Bradwell who'd like to also address the committee. The floor is yours, Mrs. Bradwell. Yeah, I'm, I'm nearly a local member. <laughs> Kirkby on Bain is, it, the village of Kirkby on Bain and very near up to the site is, uh, you know, um, sort of in my area. I abut Tom, we work together. But yes, I just wanted to come and say that um, I personally haven't had any complaints from anybody in the area. Um, I had recently had parish council meeting as well where we talked at length about, um, uh, you know, moving the um, recycling centre to this new site. Um, the parish council were very positive. They had no problems. At that time, though, we didn't have sight of the two reports on the Environment Agency and Environmental Health. We have now, and as being said by officers, they are not showing any, um, you know, undue problems with the site but I have also sent the parish council our full report as well since it's been published so they've seen that as well parish Count, council chairman thanked me for that so you know with regards to parish council I think everybody's happy and I could say that I haven't had any complaints I think I have been quite honest with the parish council that actually um, and they've made it known that if this site isn't used this new site isn't developed then we haven't anywhere else. We've been looking for a long time for a site and we were looking in Horncastle, but that didn't come off. So I think, you know, it is quite important that there is something locally because 
we, so, we are sorted in a little rural area and we're, we're a, a long way from Market Rays in Boston or Sleaford. Um, what I um, would also say, though, just on the site, and um, I just um, do wonder about only having one access. I wondered if, if any thoughts had been given to an in and out, because what I would say is I know the report says that there's only 120 vehicles a day, but during lockdown, there, has, there hasn't, I know we've had a booking system as well, that hasn't been the amount of people using it. And I think that's because I live in, I live in, and I'm getting elderly anyway, but I live in an area where there's lots of elderly people and I think a lot of them have been isolating. But when we were up and running normally, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, we would have quite a queue of traffic down the road waiting to get in the, um, t uh, the um, recycling centre we have now. So I do think we just need to think about, about that. But other than that, I'm very happy. I've spoken to lo other local people, people who I know own land there, and there they were happy they didn't, because I was trying to <coughs> investigate, you know, the history of the site, because it was quite uh, shocked. I didn't know that had been there, and I've lived there over 60 years, so, you know. <laughs> so I just felt that I just needed to talk to some people, but in the main, I think it will. it's a positive. We will always get people who aren't quite happy, but I think it's a positive that this service hopefully could remain in, in the area. Thank you, Mr. Thank you for your comments. Um, I've used this site myself again. <laughs> um, although I live some distance away, uh, uh, I've got you know, property in the Bardney area and as such, uh, uh, I've used the site uh, and uh, I've found it to be very useful. Uh, the importance of this site, of course, is it's uh, in between probably three centres, Tattershall, Coningsby, Woodall Spa and Horncastle, which are great population centres. So, um, and as uh, the neighbouring member has just said, um, Market Rays and Boston are some distance away. So it's useful to have a facility in that part of the county. It isn't on anybody's doorstep. It is reasonably remote in the countryside. So uh, it's potentially quite a good site for a, a, a facility to be placed. So I'm quite happy to move the recommendation. Would anybody else like to speak? Vice Chairman, Councillor Ashton. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. As I indicated, I would speak on this one as board member. Um, and on account of doing so, I won't take part um, in the vote itself. I believe it's absolutely important that this item came before committee today, um, given um, the genuine local concerns held by, well, actually by the people that do live quite near. There are a, um, a couple of houses that are, that, that, that are quite near, and their concerns um, certainly pick up on um, what Councillor Mrs. Brad Mrs. Bradwell um, has just referred to with highways and the queuing of traffic um, getting in and out of that site, particularly given this is a very busy road um, for quarry traffic um, coming in and out of there. Um, so those are genuine highway concerns of the people that are living locally, and I think it's absolutely right um, that they get a hearing in committee. Likewise, um, it is equally important that the previous uses of that site are fully understood and are fully considered and that councillors in making a decision um, are satisfied that the conditions that are in, uh, being imposed on the application are sufficient to give them the confidence to support the application. If they don't, they should vote against it because clearly it isn't yet known what all of those previous uses were and I'm really pleased actually to see on page 104 at condition 3, um, or at 3.1, a preliminary risk assessment will, um, which is necessary to identify all previous uses and potential, potential contaminants associated with those uses. Because this has been one of the underlying fears in both those um, near neighbours of the site 
but also um, Tumby uh, Parish Council, the other side of the River Bain, um, landowners the other side of the River Bain, Tum the Tumby estate there with its triple SIs, its woodland and, and, and everything else. Um, these are people um, that are genuinely concerned that the previous uses have not been understood well enough to know what the risks are. And I am pleased that actually as a, if, if there is a, a, a good in that condition, it is that before this um, site can indeed be built, those previous uses and the risks involved will be known. Um, and I think that is absolutely important. Um, appreciate that it's one of those things where there can often be conjecture and speculation and oh I remember a lorry coming in the middle of the night it must have been carrying something nasty well whether it was or it wasn't um, we absolutely need to know and, and and one way or another either in order to flag risks that can be addressed um, or flag them and know to avoid them. Appreciating also um, that the River Bain runs close by this site we have it clearly shown that the um, site poses little or no risk in its current form because it hasn't been disturbed for a very long period of time. And the proposed development is going to disturb it in a limited sense, but when you get digging on a site and putting concrete on top um, of an existing site, then that's when there is at least a risk um, that disturbance um, could result in something um, that otherwise wouldn't be foreseen. Um, and with the river Bain flowing into the Witham, we had the issue um, not so long ago with um, the fertiliser plant. Um, I'm not saying this is anywhere near that, but we just need to be absolutely certain sure that there is nothing in there um, that is going to cause that level of problem. Um, for that river, for um, the onward flow um, and any other um, sites or the local amenity of the neighbours or anyone else. So that is the reason that I called this application into committee. I would also speak to agree um, with um, Councillor Mrs Bradwell insofar as there is an absolute need for a household waste recycling centre serving these communities. Um, and there is, of course, <coughs> a very real risk that if this facility wasn't provided in this area, I'm not saying on this site, but if there wasn't a facility here and those people did have to uh, otherwise drive to Market Raisin um, from Horncastle, that is an incredibly long way, um, even Sleaford from Coningsby and Tattershall, which I represent, is a long way, Lincoln and Boston likewise, then there is a very real risk that every gateway um, for about three miles in any direction of Kirkby on Bain would become um, the home to people not taking um, their waste home with them, having turned up to, 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 to use a facility at Kirkby on Bain and none existing. So um, I welcome, genuinely welcome, the County Council's <laughs> commitment to keep a household waste recycling facility available at a local distance for. Um, communities that I represent and also Councillor Mrs Bradwell um, but we absolutely need to be certain sure that condition three is sufficient um, in order to give confidence in approving this application on this site um, and I am delighted to see that notwithstanding um, paragraph 3031 on page 96 that um, officers are insisting that that condition remains. I'm delighted to see that, and I would have been incredibly worried um, had that recommendation not been included. But I shall leave it there, um, Mr Chairman, as I believe the um, committee will come to its decision um, um, in due course. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any comments? No. So I'll therefore move on to Councillor Carrington, please. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I'm grateful to the officers for the report <coughs> and also grateful to our, our two local ward members uh, for the local insights. Chairman, I'll, I'll divide my, my comments really into operational matters and matters of principle. As far as operational matters are concerned, um, a site like this is always going to be challenging and it's going to be challenging for local people, notwithstanding the fact 
that there is a similar site about a mile and a half away. However, um, whilst accepting and understanding local concerns, it does seem to me that in terms of the operation of the site, we have very, very comprehensive mitigation measures which should make that all right, although I perhaps, if it's in order, would like to go back to officers about the issue of the entrance raised by uh, Councillor Mrs Bradwell. Um, as far as the dangers of the site, in a strange sort of way, it's appropriate that we're going to use a site which has been in the past a dumping ground uh, in an era much uh, earlier than, 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 than today when we didn't have the same levels of controls for a much more controlled uh, uh, operation. But the conditions and the protection provided by the conditions that I see in the report are multi-layered and multi-phased, and that seems to me to provide appropriate protections. In terms of the principal chairman, it seems to me that recycling is a key part of the environmental strategy which is at the heart of what this council does. It involves uh, frequently cooperation between the waste disposal and the waste collection authorities. Um, in this case, it's right down to us as the waste disposal authority that we have to deal uh, with the matter of household recycling. We have to provide f facilities. These sites are not easy to find. We have to make sure there are local facilities, and therefore, uh, from my point of view, Chairman, I'd be very happy to second uh, your proposal uh, that we accept uh, the uh, report before us. Thank you, Chairman. Comments? I'll therefore move on to my next speaker, is Councillor Skinner. Thank you, Chairman. Much the same as uh, Councillor Carrington. Um, I've actually, like you, used this site, uh, the one opposite it's always been really good um, I commend the report the, the depth the officers have gone to on this has really been thorough and I think we can all sit with the conditions quite quite well uh, the local members p picking up um, the entrance and aggress I, I think that's a very valid point because the existing facility there always suffered from that from memory and as, as long as uh, you proposing and the gentleman second it, um, note that in the report. I'm quite happy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't believe there's anything we need to ask the officers for before we uh, put it to a vote. So I'm looking around and everyone seems happy with that. So therefore, with the report as printed has been proposed by myself, seconded by Councillor Carrington, uh, and I will therefore put it to the vote. All in favour, please show now. And a quick look round for those people voting. Uh, everybody is in favour. I will ask for anybody against and any abstentions. And of course there are none. And the local member, Councillor Ashton, has already said that uh, he will be talking as local member, not as a committee member. So no problems. Thank you. So therefore that one is granted as printed. Application 7.1 is the alternate use Boston projects for an out order out granting development consent for the Boston Alternate Energy Facility um, at the Riverside Industrial Estate, Boston, EN 010095. Um, I believe with this one we have uh, Mr. M McBride online who's going to introduce the report. So the floor is yours, Mr. McBride. Uh, thank you, Chairman, and good morning, councillors. Um, Sorry that I'm not able to be with you this morning. Unfortunately, uh, a family member is self is um, has tested positive, so I'm in self isolation at the moment. So um, the report before you is um, in respect of a slightly different application to those that the committee normally receive. In that the committee is not the decision maker for this application, but providing observations to the planning inspectorate who will make the decision on the application. So in that regard, I thought that um, it would be useful for the presentation to give you a bit of background into the um, process for dealing with a development consent order. The applicant um, will then speak uh, and inform you about the application in detail. Again, because it's not a normal plan application, the, um, the applicant has longer and then three minutes to provide that information to you to give you a, an insight into the development. So 
I won't go into, into too much detail around that, um, but just to make you aware um, of the issues that have been identified in the report. So if I can have the first slide, please. Thank you. So, um, yeah, the first slide just shows the uh, location as to where we are. So, um, we're at Boston and we're at the southern side of Boston on the Riverside Industrial Estate. And the application area is the area that's identified in red. So, you can see there's two parts there. There's the main application site, which extends to around uh, 25 hectares and then a smaller area to the southeast, which is proposed to be used as a, a sort of biodiversity um, mitigation area. Next slide, please. So as I said, just to give you some background to the national, nationally significant infrastructure project regime, it was a um, it was a procedure that was introduced by the Planning Act in 2008 and basically it enables large infrastructure projects to be granted planning per um, permission by the Secretary of State rather than going through the normal local planning authority process. So in dealing with the development consent order it basically allows the government to, to deal with these large scale infrastructure, uh, infrastructure projects. An application is submitted by the planning inspectorate to the government department responsible for the particular development. So in this case, as it's an energy related project, um, it's been dealt with by the business um, secretary of state. The planning inspector examines the application and makes a recommendation to the Secretary of State who will decide whether to grant consent or not. Applications are examined and determined in accordance with the national policy statements for energy and any other relevant national policy statement. Next slide please. So in terms of the principles behind the development consent order process, it's a single consent regime. So the idea is that um, all the consents are dealt with under one single process. It has statutory timescales to ensure that there isn't any significant delay in terms of um, coming to a decision on the application. National policy statements are the main key um, policy frameworks for which the applications are assessed against. It's front loaded in, in that a lot of work goes on before the application is formally submitted to the um, plan inspectorate to address as many of the issues as possible. It's largely a written process in terms of submissions of um, written representations, although there will be an opportunity for a examination in public to take place sometime later this year when those issues will be put in front of a planning inspector and the various parties have an opportunity to make their um, points to that planning inspector. Next slide, please. So I say that the, uh, the process is front loaded. So the pre-application stage, whilst on this slide it indicates that it can be one year plus, I think, as Councillor Austin mentioned at the very start of the meeting, we have been in discussions with the developer, as have Boston Borough Council, for probably nearly three years now. So it has um, taken a long time to get to the stage where the application was able to be formally submitted. Um, it was formally submitted earlier this year in April uh, and um, has now been accepted by the inspectorate to be taken forward to examination. And you'll see there that um, the second part of the process, where we are at the moment, we're at the um, pre-examination uh, stage. So we're in that slot where it says four to five months. Uh, the examination will take place uh, later this year. 
and then the Secretary of State then has a um, prescribed period of time to make the decision on the application. Next slide, please. In dealing with this application, um, as a council, we've um, tried to be as prepared as we can be in terms of um, uh, enacting our role as a statutory consultee. Uh, we've worked with the developer with their statement of um, community consultation. We've uh, provided um, responses to their technical uh, information that they provided. And we had a, a, a series of meetings with the applicant before the application was um, submitted to raise our concerns and give the applicant an opportunity to address those before their formal submission um, had, had been made. Next slide, please. Whilst we are uh, obviously involved in making um, representations to the planning inspectorate on this. There are also um, roles for the normal other statutory consultees, so the Environment Agency, um, the um, Natural England, Historic England, so all those sort of um, well-recognised statutory bodies will also be involved in this and will be going through a similar sort of process in terms of providing information or observations to the Secretary of State um, via the plan inspectors is what we are doing at the moment. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned, we're currently at uh, the acceptance stage where um, the plan inspectors has confirmed that the application is valid and that all the necessary um, so procedures have, have, have um, been followed in terms of the, the documentation that support the application and um, the Secretary of State has been seeking the views of the uh, statutory consultees through the uh, relevant representation stage. So we can go to the next slide please. So that's um, in the pre-examination um, part of the process. And um, the bit there that's highlighted in bold, relevant representations. So like um, the other statutory consultees, we have as a council already made some representations to the plan inspectorate to identify the principal issues that the council believe that need to be addressed um, during the examination. And at this stage, we have um, as officers committed to outlining those areas that are of concern to the council and the um, purpose of the committee of the report to the committee today is to give you uh, an opportunity to see what those issues are and to seek um, council's agreement that we continue um, with um, the, the issues that we've raised in, in, the, in the manner that we have them so far addressed them. There'll also be further opportunities uh, for the council in terms of producing a local impact report, which will be um, presented to the inspector for the examination. And also we'll be um, working with the applicant through um, a procedure of um, statements of common ground to set out um, for the inspector, those issues that we are in agreement with, uh, with the applicant, and those issues that we are not able to, to reach agreement with, and they will all be part of the examination process. Next slide, please. So the um, local impact report is a, a key part of the process, and that is for the local councils to set out in detail to the plan inspectorate, uh, the issues that they believe the um, project will have on the local area, both positive, negative, and any neutral impacts. Um, so that will provide the um, plan inspector with um, key background information to the, um, to the site and the area and the issues that. Uh, that need to be taken into account um, during the uh, um, decision-making stage. 
Next slide, please. So say the examining um, authority has three months to um, basically um, make a decision following the examination and they need to take into account national policy statements, local impact reports, important and relevant matters and also international obligations and to recommend to the Secretary of State as to whether a development consent order is uh, granted or not. Next slide, please. So we can just um, go through this, through this. So the examination stage provides uh, a period of time of six months. So it gives some certainty to uh, um, both the developer and those um, statutory interest in the local community um, over the time period that will take place, the, uh, over the, the period of time that the examination will take place. Um, it needs to be relevant and pick up the uh, important issues. National policy statements are key to it and also the local policy um, context in terms of the Minerals and Waste local plan and the uh, South East Lincolnshire local plan as well. Next slide, please. This slide just gives um, a sort of flow through the process in terms of showing how the uh, process works in terms of the pre-application engagement, building that evidence base um, for the first stage of the council to provide those relevant representations, and then that opportunity to refine those relevant representations through the statements of common ground, local impact report and written representations to the examination. Next slide, please. Um, I think this is this one that's uh, this is a repeat of an earlier slide, so apologies that's um, um, a duplicate. So we can go to the next one, please. So as I say, the Secretary of State has a period of three months to make that final decision. And again, those um, based on the report of the plan inspector and that decision will take into account the national policy statements, local impact reports, and those other um, issues that are uh, identified there. And finally, um, like any planning decision, the decision of the um, Secretary, Secretary of State is open to judicial review if any party wishes to challenge the decision on the basis that uh, uh, the decision is, is granted. So I think uh, hopefully that just gives you a little bit of background to the process, um, just bringing you to the committee report itself. As I say, you'll hear from the applicant shortly, who will be able to take you through the development in more detail than what I'm able to do. But hopefully the report before you sets out uh, the main um, parts of the development in, in some detail, so at least you've got that um, before you to, uh, to refer to. And um, like normal, on page 116, uh, paragraph um, 11 onwards, that's the start of identifying the sort of key um, planning issues that, uh, or an, and environmental issues that uh, uh, the application has taken into consideration. And those in the report are the applicants' um, proposed methods for dealing with all those environmental and technical issues. So again, I won't go through those in, in detail. Just moving you forward to page 124, the main um, paragraph 61. So as normal, the main planning considerations are set out um, in the report. And these have largely focused on the waste side of things in terms of uh, both, um, well, to start off with Europe, the European context, and then moving down to the national context. And finally, to um, the local plan um, policy on page 127, dealing with waste and setting out the main issues that, uh, that need to be taken into account um, 
when um, making observations on this um, application. Page 129, uh, paragraph 62. So unlike a normal plan application, the consultation that um, we've undertaken has just been internal as we are only providing the comments um, in respect of um, the County Council's specialist areas. So again, there you can see um, the areas that um, have been um, consulted and um, that section of the report provides the responses that have been um, received from all those specific topic um, services. So I can move you on through the report to page 139 um, to the discussion and conclusion. So in terms of the application and um, what is being asked of the committee today, um, as I say, it's not like a normal plan application. So we're not looking at the whole sort of um, suite of issues that we would normally do for a plan application. What we're concentrating on here are those um, topics that um, are the responsibility of the County Council. And the main issue of concern that has been raised um, in the review of this um, application by officers is a conflict with the policies in the Minerals and Waste Local Plan. As set out there, the proposal um, is to bring in 1.2 million tonnes of refuse derived fuel per annum to the county um, and at the moment there isn't any provision to um, bring in waste from Lincolnshire so essentially this waste is being brought to the county from other parts of the country. Your officer's view is that there hasn't been sufficient detail provided in the application to demonstrate the impact of that on the uh, both national planning context in terms of minerals, so, uh, sorry, in terms of waste, and also in particular the impact on um, the local waste planning policies. Um, as set out in the report, uh, what uh, capacity that is required to deal with um, Lincolnshire's uh, waste through energy recovery is quite modest in nature and to enable a facility to deal with 1.2 million tonnes far exceeds any capacity requirements that have been set out in the Minerals and Waste Local Plan and the recently completed Waste Needs Assessment, which uh, has been published uh, this month and again confirms that there is no uh, requirement for the scale of um, energy recovery that is being proposed by this um, project. Therefore, um, the uh, conclusions that um, the requirements in terms of need for this facility well exceeds um, the uh, projected figures that were set out in the Minerals and Waste Local Plan have been reaffirmed by the recently published Waste Needs Assessment. So that's the main area of concern um, of officers. The other area that um, has been picked up in the report in terms of the impact of the energy recovery uh, from a sustainability perspective, um, energy from waste um, can have uh, issues in terms of not being as um, sort of uh, sustainable as um, perhaps the developer uh, may wish to um, have others believe. And for that reason, um, in the report, those areas of conflict with um, climate, uh, climate change and sustainability issues have been identified uh, and at this moment um, represent another reason for the Council to um, object to the application. Finally, in terms of concerns of the development, there is, there is an issue in terms of the information that has been um, submitted to deal with um, cultural heritage and at the moment um, your officers do not feel that uh, sufficient information has been provided to uh, enable um, an appropriate assessment of the development in terms of cultural heritage and archaeology 
and therefore that is the third area of, um, of concern uh, or objection that um, the um, committee is asked to uh, um, to basically um, endorse through the um, meeting this morning. The other um, on page 140 um, in terms of the areas that uh, the application is considered to be in um, conformity with are set out um, uh, from paragraph um, 70, 71, 72, 73 uh, in the report and just finally paragraph 74. This confirms that in relation to other matters such as economic development, landscape and visual impact, noise, air quality and ground investigation, these issues are left to uh, Boston Borough Council to respond to the planning inspectorate through their um, observations um, through, the, through the process and uh, um, so that they are already doing that um, appropriately. So the recommendation before the committee this morning is split in two parts. Firstly, part A, that the County Council objects to the application to development consent due to the application being contrary to the Minerals and Waste Local Plan with respect to policies W1 and BM2. In addition, an objection is raised to the cultural heritage information provided as this is not sufficiently adequate to assess the level of evaluation to allow sufficient understanding of the archaeological potential which will be impacted by the proposal in order to allow for an informed planning recommendation. Subject to appropriately worded requirements, no objection is raised by the County Council as local highway and lead local flood authority. And part B, that the head of planning in consultation with the chair and vice chair of the planning regulation committee be given get delegated authority to amend the council's response to the application during the examination process should further information be provided that addresses the objections identified in a above so thank you chairman sorry that uh, the introduction was quite long and sorry as i say that i'm not able to be in the room with you this morning Thank you for your comments, Mr. McBride. Um, next, I have a speaker in support of the application who will be addressing the meeting. And as Mr. McBride's already uh, intim intimated, that uh, uh, Sam Williams will not be time restricted. So, uh, Sam, the floor is yours whenever you are ready, please. Oh, please excuse my past uh, background that I'm showing in there. That must have been from one of my last. Um, Last meetings online. It's not my house, by the way. Um, uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, um, for uh, allowing us today to um, speak on behalf of Alternative Use and, of course, uh, in support of our application. And thank you, Mr. McBride, for your uh, for your brief. I think your brief pretty much covers um, uh, most aspects of the project. Um, but what I plan to do is give you a general overview of what that project means um, and what we bring um, to um, Boston and to Lincolnshire County County itself. Um, but of course, I'm in fear of repetition, so I'll try to avoid doing that. OK, next uh, slide, please. And the following slide, please. There we go. Thank you. Apologies, it's a little bit wordy, but the reason in this is uh, basically to give you Again, some a little bit of light reading, but also to give you, a, a, again, a general overview of, of what the project is about, uh, how it works, uh, what we're doing, and uh, timescales, etc. But I'll run through these in brief. So um, a little bit of it, uh, idea of what uh, Alternative Use is about. Um, Alternative Use is a company that's been 20 years in the, um, in the industry. Um, we've been already... Uh, developing projects locally in, uh, in the area. We developed the gasification plant that is actually uh, adjacent to the proposed uh, Boston uh, Energy uh, site. Um, that is a gasification site that's there at the moment. It's been commissioned and it was um, funded by a large investment infrastructure. Um, 
the um, as Neil said in the uh, in his in his uh, presentation, um, the uh, Boston Alternative Energy Facility is classified as a nationally significant infrastructure project, uh, which then means we have to put in a development consent order or expect to get a development consent order. And that uh, this is because it's over 50 megawatts is generally the, the time or the, the uh, uh, level that you have to do this. Um, and as said, Lincolnshire County Council is one of the statutory consultees in that process. Um, as said, we are guided by the national um, policy statements um, and we fully understand um, from the consultations that we've had already that we may not be part or compliant with the Lincolnshire's waste policies. Um, but hopefully I'll demonstrate as part of this um, uh, presentation that uh, there is an opportunity here for us to be working together. Um, if you could go a little bit further down on the slide, please. It's a project description. Yes, thank you. Um, so just a quick run through of what the project description is. You know, we have a, a wharf, uh, which we're uh, planning to build. I'll show you at the end of this, there's a, an overall map. And again, apologies, this isn't in the normal format that you would expect to see these. Um, so there is a, a wharf that we'll be building, and that is there mainly so um, that we don't burden the port itself, and also we don't affect the uh, road network around us, um, because we fully understand from working in, in the area already that is uh, of some concern. Um, the energy from waste plant, yes, is designed to do between 1 to 1.2 million tonnes, that's capacity of 1.2 million tonnes, um, to then produce uh, roughly 85 megawatts of uh, electricity. Um, the, we also include uh, CO2 capture is something very important that comes from these types of schemes. Um, we are very conscious of course, as a development company, that we that we are in line with all environmental issues, and CO2 capture is only just starting to take off in the energy industry. We've actually put a lot of time into this, and uh, we are talking to a number of companies in our, and incorporating it in our design that we do have CO2 capture. And as you can say, see here, we've got we're capturing at the moment t uh, ten tons of CO2 uh, per hour. Um, that's not the full size of the plant. We're subject to technology and how it is at this moment. Um, but what we have to do as part of a, uh, of a progressive company, progressive project, we have to make sure that we improve on the technologies as we go forward. That's a given. And of course, we will improve on the carbon capture as we go forward um, over the years of operation. Um, just addressing some of the other things that, that go out of the plant, so carbon capture is one. Um, ash residue, as you can imagine, on this sort of scale is quite substantial uh, and would normally go to landfill. In this case, we, we have a, a lightweight aggregate facility. Again, I'll show you on the map uh, where that's located, where it takes the um, uh, ash from the um, process itself, it mixes it with different fines and dredgings that we may take, say, for instance, from the um, from the um, from the wash or from from the haven, um, which is, again, naturally or normally having to be um, disposed of. And um, that's made into a uh, into a pellet, you could call it. Um, and then it's made uh, kiln dried uh, and made into a lightweight aggregate, which is then um, very good as a as an alternative aggregate, again, better for the environment. Um, which then helps go towards, as I've written here, into the, the net zero for steel and uh, less cement in construction industry. Um, to the next slide, please. Okay, so um, feedstock. Um, we talk here about, as you can imagine, uh, this is quite a large amount of waste that's being moved around uh, the country. Um, you know, we are part of the national waste um, policy goals in in how waste is um, dealt with. Um, we have to think about being very serious of who we contract with when it comes to waste. So the, we, we speak to companies like cited here, Totus Environmental, 
and others. And I think the and others is where the opportunity is where we can work together. Um, these are all these things are all subject to existing contracts, existing timelines that may already be in place. For example, for Lincolnshire County Council, you know, there's uh, uh, contracts for waste providers are quite lengthy. And so it may not be written in the DCO because we uh, uh, that we would consider taking uh, localized waste purely because um, we can't um, we can't guarantee that that waste will be available at the time of the project being built. So we have to look at outside influences first and then internal influences localized such as yourselves as the project moves forward. So what we're saying is that there is an opportunity there for us to be working together and to work within your um, uh, waste policies. Uh, moving, uh, being uh, mindful of time here, if you can move down to the bottom of this page, please, with some of the, uh, the benefits. Uh, benefits for Boston and Lincolnshire. So there's some obvious ones here um, that obviously there's going to be a lot of creation of localised jobs, um, skilled, semi-skilled, not only during the construction, but also when in operation. Um, there'll be apprenticeship schemes where we'll be using um, uh, Boston um, College. Um, we'll be contracting with local companies during the um, construction phases and during the operations and maintenance. And the operation and maintenance will be over the full 25 year term. Um, we are contracting, um, we already have um, heads of terms and agreements in place uh, with uh, Port of Boston for using their pilot services. As you can, man as you can imagine, we need to manage the um, shipping up and down the uh, haven. Um, we are improving also as part of the development around that site. Uh, the habitats for the wildlife along the edges of the haven and um, this is you know for provision of nesting of birds for instance for red shank all the things that you'll see pop up from the long-term work that we've already looked at and spoken to rspb natural england already to get to this point to give them satisfaction that we're doing the right thing for the area um, to be able to take count of all environmental issues um, we're, we will be providing renewable and stable power supply to the area. So that is something probably that Lincolnshire County Council is in favour of, of having renewable energy um, coming to the area, um, as well as the jobs and um, uh, the contracts to local companies. Um, but also um, the, uh, the uh, ability to bring business to local hospitality, hotel shops, you know, we're going to be here for a while and, you know, all we want to do is use people locally um, to support the, um, the local infrastructure. Um, if, I put it in here as a benefit as well, where we're talking about capturing the CO2, um, where we talk about better for the environment. I said it's a, it's a big headline in the energy industry at the moment. And I think it's a good tick in the box for Lincolnshire County Council to have, yes, a large um, scheme there who are complying and actually ahead of a lot of other schemes um, in the size of uh, carbon capture. Um, and then in my last point that I put here, which is the whole point of this presentation, is that we are very open to receive process waste from Boston Borough Council and Lincolnshire County Council um, via whatever methods, again, trying to avoid um, the road network. Um, and as said, it's based on uh, current permissions and permissions that we would need to gain and the availability of those contracts and what those terms may be. Uh, next page, please. Next slide, please. So just to give you an indication of where we are overall on the um, area. Uh, thank you, that's better orientation. Uh, uh, so what we can see here is the Haven uh, is coming up on the south side of this um, slide, as you can see by the ships, um, where the ships will come in. They'll actually turn at the dock uh, and come back down and, um, and uh, place themselves here. The baled waste will be taken off the ships, uh, put onto a conveyor which goes naturally through a bale store. The bale store isn't there necessarily to store bale. 
um, but it is there as an emergency um, uh, uh, condition of if there's uh, any problems with waste or if there's um, a long-term um, uh, requirement to store some waste, well, at least we have that. And that is obviously within a controlled environment. Then you have a conveyor, which you can see like the blue aligned, which goes up and over to uh, the main part of the power plant, which is where you can see the three lines, three red lines. Um, uh, that conveyor is all enclosed. Um, so the bales are sled wrapped, they're enclosed. Um, they go over into, um, it's very difficult for me to point because I can't point out on the screen. Um, it goes into bale breakers. Um, this is all internal now, of course, where the um, waste is um, broken open and then fed into the three lines. As I said, you can see three lines of red going to the um, west of, the, of this drawing. Um, and that's where it makes power. Um, and then grid connection, you can see at the very west part of that. Um, so I'm trying to demonstrate that we don't have too much um, break into the infrastructure locally. Um, there's a grid connection there um, shown by a little red box and um, um, some, uh, some lines there. Um, so everything is very, very local to, for a, such a large infrastructure to be able to easily manage this type of waste coming in. Um, and then uh, as it regards to around the placement, um, just below that, um, uh, where the plant is, is where the existing or the, the old landfill site used to be. Um, just above, um, if you look at the very bottom of this drawing, it's got a, like a box with all the um, with all the titles in. Just above there is where Boston One is. Yes, thank you. So that's the the biomass um, number three. So that's our, our old um, plant, which is now, um, as I said, commissioned uh, and in place. Um, next door to that, you see um, there's uh, f uh, five lines. Uh, sorry, four lines um, of red again with a red box. Thank you. Um, that is the lightweight aggregate plant. So all the ash from this plant gets blown down to the uh, lightweight aggregate plant, again, sealed systems, um, whereby it's made into lightweight aggregate. And that lightweight aggregate then gets loaded back onto um, a barge and back down uh, away from Boston. So inputs and outputs of this scheme is taken care of. Um, again, avoiding the local networks, avoiding impact uh, on the uh, local environment. Um, and we are taking very careful care um, of how we interact um, with um, uh, Boston Borough Council, yourselves as statutory consultees. Um, again, the overall message is that, you know, we want to convey a, a you know, a positive mess message to Lincolnshire County Council showing that our intention really is wanting to work together, uh, bringing jobs opportunities um, um, to the area and support the local infrastructure uh, of relevant businesses. You know, we're here, we've been here before, um, we've worked very well um, with you in the past um, and we want to continue along that line. Um, we want to have a mutually beneficial, symbiotic um, future ahead together. Um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all for, for your time, attention and consideration. Thank you very much. It's quite a, a long introduction by uh, both people. Um, I will open it to committee. Um, I don't know if uh, Mr. Williams is still there or not. Is there any questions from anybody anywhere? So, Councillor Smith. To ask uh, uh, Mr. McBride a question if he is still present. Uh, uh, Mr. McBride will be still be present. Uh, so we'll deal with that one in a moment because yep, that will no be problem. a committee question. Councillor Skinner. Thank you, Chairman. The, I find, a, find the report is, uh, it conflicts in several places, so I'm just trying to clear my head a little bit. So we've got carbon capture on this, or haven't we? I was understanding the carbon capture probably wasn't there now. And uh, the presentation has been, it is there, but only partially. I mean, carbon capture is a developing technology. It, it ha It's not fully there. Um, even the the um, 
conventional power stations that are getting put, put up in China, they're, they're, they have no carbon capture because they're Mitsubishi Babti, and you know it's not state of art at the moment. But that's the first question. We'll ask is Mr. William still there to answer that with regard to the uh, capture. I am. Yes, thank you, and uh, uh, thank you for the question. Yes, carbon capture is one of the main requirements of this plant. Um, we've spent a lot of time talking to a lot of companies in how um, this process is, um, let's say, reliable. Um, let's say, um, uh, able to operate um, over long terms. Um, and you're you're right in the sense that the the technology is relatively new. Um, it is demonstra demonstratable, and we are able to demonstrate that. Um, we wouldn't be making it part of our application to um, the pins if it, if we couldn't deliver it. So we have to deliver it now that we've stated it. Uh, um, so it will be carbon capture will be part of our um, process overall, and our. Um, uh, design of the of the system for the for environmental purposes. It has to be part of it. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. Mr. Councillor Skinner. Thank you very much, Chairman. The the other question that re regards uh, things that have been buried previously. Uh, plants like this in Japan actually function by mining previous waste sites. Has any consideration been given to that, Mr. Williams? Yeah, waste mining is 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 maybe um, again. I'm not uh, totally au fait on what, exactly what Jap Japan is doing, but um, there has been talk uh, within the UK of of mining wastes. You know, could bring me back out of landfill. Um, you know, we're talking about RDF in this, which is um, processed waste already, um, and. The, uh, the, the amount of waste that we have going out of this country at the moment um, um, post-Brexit um, is, is and will be increasing. And, you know, we need to deal with our own um, uh, uh, waste needs first. Um, and if it ever got to the point where um, there was never enough fuel for a plant like this or any other developing plants that come forward, then something like mining waste um, would become relevant. But I think the picture that we see at the moment, you know, waste is increasing that we have here in the UK. PPE from the COVID pandemic um, is all going to um, waste. And you must be seeing that as part of Lincolnshire County Council wastes coming in. Um, and that will can only get worse for the foreseeable future or for the long future. Um, but there is a possibility, yes, sorry, to answer that in short. Anybody else, any questions? Uh, Vice Chairman, Councillor Ashton. Thank you, I just can pick up on the uh, carbon capture. Um, very kindly gave us a um, hourly output rate. Um, how, what um, quantity of carbon dioxide um, do you envisage being captured and reused? Um, I think you've mentioned somewhere in your design and access statement um, as food grade. Um, could you explain how much um, of the carbon that you capture, um, what quantity that is every year, and also how much of that is food grade carbon, um, appreciating the, um, lead, the needs of our local food sectors? Thank you. Yes, no problem. Thank you for that. Um, yeah, so we have three lines, not to try to get too technical into it. So we have three lines. Two of the lines have carbon capture on them. Um, but as a total, this uh, as a total, this is 20% per line of the two lines that are in place. Um, again, technology will take us so far as it stands at the moment to those types of levels. We want to improve upon that. And as technology goes forward, then we will make sure that we capture more carbon. Um, again, it has to be part of our improvement process of any new development or any long-standing development as it goes forward. Um, the type of um, carbon that we're capturing 
and what it ends up in. It will be made into a food grade. And we know that Boston fortuitously has a lot of um, food operations uh, local to the area. Um, so there's opportunity there. But it also can be agricultural grade as well, where it can be used as a fertilizer um, for the land. So there's opportunities in both to provide that locally. Thank you for the answer. Councillor Carrington. I think my question may have just been answered, but if Mr Williams is still there, I'd, I'd, I'd love just, just to bottom this business of carbon capture. If I understood you right, Mr Williams, you said that there would be three lines and the line broke slightly, but 20% of each line would be captured. Question one is, is that correct? And question two, if there are three lines, why don't you do carbon capture on all three? Thank you, Chairman. Okay, yes, very good question, thank you. Um, so, uh, yeah, we are, uh, technology, again, so you're correct, it is two lines, 20% 20, 20 from each line, equating to 10 tonnes per hour, is the overall balance between that. Um, we would like to capture off all three lines, but unfortunately the space available from the carbon capture units that are available at this moment doesn't allow us to capture from the three lines. But ideally, we would like to capture all three. And again, it would be part of our focus from our operations and maintenance point of view that we would, we would eventually take three lines and then improve that carbon capture as we go forward. It will become mandatory, I'm sure, for every uh, power plant in the future that they will have to have carbon ca capture. I think we're almost there uh, as, a, as a government and as a country um, but we are trying to stay ahead of the game. And so I think from what we're doing at the moment is, is quite far ahead of others that are, that are doing some, some that are far smaller and far larger facilities. Thank you for the answer. Are there any further questions? Seeing nobody were indicating, I'll therefore say thank you, Mr. Williams, for your comments. I'll go back to Mr. McBride and ask if he wishes to add anything to the debate prior to the committee speaking. Thank you, thank you. So the answer is no, because I can see, I can see all sorts of things happening in front of me, <laughs> all relevant to the committee, but uh, um, uh, Mr. McBride doesn't appear to be on screen, so no problem. I'll therefore open it to committee and go to Councillor Smith, who had a question of Mr McBride. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it comes back to the report, and it, say, and it states, the National Planning Statement NSP EN1 and EN3 provide the primary basis for decisions on nationally significant renewable energy infrastructure. At section 2.5 NSP EN3 sets out policy principles in relation to waste combustion. NSP... EN1 sets out the government's policy for delivery of major energy infrastructure. Uh, I shall skip that. Paragraph 4.1.2 states that given the level and urgency of need for infrastructure covered by part three of NPS EN1, the decision maker should start with the presumption in favor of granting consent to applications for energy NSIPSs. The presumption applies unless a more specific policy is set out in relevant NSPs clearly indicate that consent should be refused subject to the provision of section 1.4 of the Planning Act 2008. My question is, are there any? Because in the report, it is not clear that there are any. There, goes, there are in the local context. My concern is as, a, as an authority and as a corporate body, if we were to refuse based on a local context, I think we would have some questions to answer from uh, the Right Honourable Secretary of State. Mr McBride, are you there? Hopefully, I'm, I'm, you can hear me. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, the important thing to remember in relation to, uh, to this application is that as a county council, we are not the decision maker, the um, Secretary of State, um, will be the one that makes the decision on the uh, application and um, the inspector will have regard and have great um, will give great weight to the national policy statements i think it's important that our role as 
um, a consultee in the process is to set out the issues that we believe are important, relevant to um, the local planning context. I mean, there, there is, um, I haven't got it immediately in front of me, but there is reference in um, some of the, um, the wording for the national policy statements, but there is a need to also have regard to local plan policy as well. So I think it's right that we draw the attention to the um, plan inspector of the concerns that at the moment we believe uh, exist with this application in conflict with our minerals and waste local plan. So I'm looking around, Councillor Ashton, Vice Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr Chairman. I'd just like to begin with a question um, that Mr McBride might be able to help with, um, and that is to understand um, quite how policy W1 um, applies in this context. Um, the text of that policy um, refers to identifying location for a range of newer extended waste management facilities within Lincolnshire where these are necessary to meet the predicted capacity gaps for waste arising in the county up to and including 2031. Um, that policy refers to waste arising in Lincolnshire. Um, at no point um, are we suggesting that this particular application handles waste arising from in Lincolnshire? It specifically deals with waste imported by um, ship. Uh, page um, 133, as a waste management um, authority, the County Council has set out very clearly that this capacity is not required by Lincolnshire County Council, nor does it expect there to be a need for this beyond the current um, arrangements and contract, uh, con um, contracts. Um, elsewhere, we are saying that we don't actually envisage there being a need um, in the context of policy W1 um, until 2045, which is some time, some considerable time after the expiry of the current local plan. Um, it feels on my interpretation that policy W1 is at best absolutely silent on waste from outside of Lincolnshire, um, or, or, or at worst, not actually relevant. Um, could you explain to me where I've got that wrong, please? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to tell you exactly where you've got it wrong. I mean, I think the, um, the basic principle is that the Minerals and Waste Local Plan is looking at uh, making provision for uh, waste facilities to deal with waste that is um, generated or arising in Lincolnshire. We also, as part of um, when we prepare um, the local plan, we do um, have what's called a duty to cooperate. So we do talk to other waste uh, plan authorities in other parts of the country. And what that intends to do is to basically, um, to ensure that uh, where there might be a, a possibility that waste from one particular region needs to go to another region, then the, um, the, the, the waste local plan of that recipient, recipient region takes into account that exchange of, uh, of waste between those two regions. So in terms of developing the um, waste local plan through the duty to cooperate, there was, no, um, there was no requirement put to us from other waste plan authorities to say that there was a need for us to make provision for waste that was being um, basically being generated outside Lincolnshire. So on that, on that basis, the, 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 the plan has only made provision to deal with waste facilities that um, are required to deal with waste that is being generated within Lincolnshire. And the other policy that um, has been made reference to um, by the applicant on, um, and it's uh, referenced um, on page 129 of the report in terms of the waste site uh, allocations policy SL3 at the top of the page, waste, waste sites and area allocations, which as you'll see in the, um, the wording there, um, looks at uh, the wording from policy W1. 
and that then goes to the next stage in terms of making provision for uh, um, land to be allocated or to be uh, um, identified for dealing with the requirement for a waste facility that is dealing with um, Lincoln's waste. So the, the argument that we're sort of making is that uh, um, the applicant has contended that, um, that the site is in accordance with policy SL3 of the Minerals and Waste Local Plan a site location document um, that it is a, an area that is allocated for energy recovery through, um, through waste. But our view is that um, that allocation is only for waste that is identified as being needed or being required to be dealt with, um, but basically arises in, in, in Lincolnshire because during the plan preparation, there was no um, there was no um, proposals or no requirements that we were notified from other waste plan authorities to say that we should be making provision or asking us to make provision for uh, waste that is being being generated from from outside Lincolnshire. So, if we had been made to uh, uh, if we'd been asked to to make provision for uh, waste coming from other parts of the country then that is something that we would have been able to have examined during the waste local plan preparation um, process and therefore, um, if necessary, made provision for those facilities. But as we were asked to do that, then the plan is only concentrated um, with waste that arises in Lincolnshire because that's all that we, we were, that's all that was identified that was needed through the uh, local plan preparation process. Thank you, Councillor Ashton. Thank you, Mr McBride, um, for that detailed and, and helpful explanation. Um, I'm quite troubled on this application because it's very rare um, that I find myself um, reading through a paper and the relative uh, relevant policies and other documents and coming up with a conclusion that um, really is um, the opposite of that which we are being advised to recommend. And my reason for that is, as um, I set out in my question, I'm troubled by the extent to which policy W1 can ma be made to apply for an application that deals with waste, which has nothing to do with any waste generated in Lincolnshire. And whilst I understand the um, answer in respect of um, SL3, the high allocation, that's an allocation that's in the plan um, to provide land for waste need um, that may or may not arise in Lincolnshire. Um, we have considerable evidence from our own waste management authority that this capacity is not needed and it is not envisaged to be needed not just for the duration of this minerals and waste local plan, but not until at least 14 years after the expiry of that plan. And I think you'll find that on page 130 of our papers, um, where it says the uh, plan sets out that there is only a modest need for additional capacity, etc. There is no requirement for additional energy recovery in Lincolnshire until at least 2045. So I'm actually quite comfortable that this is not talking about, this is using a site which has been put aside for waste use, excuse me, but I'm satisfied that it isn't a waste need that we need as a local authority um, for actually the next 24 years. So I'm quite comfortable with this being an appropriate location. I'm quite comfortable, actually, that it doesn't contravene um, policy w W1, because again, it doesn't concern facility um, concern waste coming from Lincolnshire. I appreciate the other area of challenge is DM2. But on this, when we, and I appreciate we are not the decision-making authority on this, we are not the planning authority. We are only, as a committee today, looking at the areas of policy which are relevant to Lincolnshire County Council 
and it will be for the Secretary of State of the Planning Inquiry, which will inevitably follow, um, to determine the wider um, planning, um, the wider planning balance. But just addressing um, policy DM2, um, it speaks of in terms of minerals and waste that we identify locations which reduce distances travelled by HGVs in the supply of minerals and the treatment of waste. And it goes on um, beyond that. But on that point alone, the tonnages being processed by this plant, which are received by ship, which thereby negate literally thousands of HGV journeys per year, I see that as a huge tick on the DM2. If we look at the waste provisions of DM2, it talks of um, implement the waste hierarchy, in particular reduced waste going to landfill, demonstrably achieved by this application. Identify locations suitable for um, renewable energy generation. Well, we obviously didn't identify this site for this purpose, but um, it is renewable energy gen generation. Uh, but more importantly, we look to encourage carbon reduction and carbon capture measures to be implemented where appropriate. We've heard this morning that carbon capture is something which is still relative in its infancy as a technology. I appreciate that this plant looks to harvest, I think on my reckonings, if it's about 80,000 tonnes of carbon um, out of 600 odd thousand tonnes of carbon um, per year, which are figures that I have, by the way, from the um, design and access statement, and you can find those if you look it up on page 14 and page 55 of that document. Um, this is, and my maths are fairly rusty, but if we say 12%, that is a genuine positive step in the right direction for, um, for, for, for carbon capture, given that when this plan was put together in 2016, um, I imagine 12% carbon capture would have been quite um, a, a, an encouraging aspiration. Furthermore, in terms of carbon, we heard, um, my apologies for this, Mr Willis, you made a very good point in respect of Agenda Item 5.1, that um, there will need to be a supply, um, in that case of gas, but we may say energy, um, that comes from carbon sources as we transition to a low carbon future. So the fact that this will um, emit carbon, I would say from our um, papers this morning, it would ob uh, emit clearly less carbon than landfill. It would clearly capture more carbon um, than is um, common at the moment for power plants. It, there is the opportunity to use that carbon in a relatively local setting if it is harvested um, at food grade. And there is a recognised need um, to continue for, for power generation and power resources um, as we move to a low carbon future. And this is, as we have heard, 85 megawatts of um, renewable energy being produced relatively locally in Lincolnshire. And we may argue, as I, I, I note from our um, documents, that our, our, our papers, whether it is renewable, whether it is quite renewable. We, we, we can argue this um, backwards and forwards, but at the end of the day, we mustn't allow um, the perfect to be the enemy of good. It is perfectly feasible, it is perfectly acceptable in, term, in, 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 in planning um, that should um, an application not meet one criteria of a policy or of a set of policies, when you judge it in the round of those policies, um, that does not necessarily mean that it must be refused. And, 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 and on the basis of what I've, ex of, of what I've talked about, um, I feel we should be supporting this because uh, the, the, one, the one area where it clearly 
does um, not quite conform is with the um, Wave Framework Directive, uh, which seeks to locate processing facilities relatively near um, to where that waste is created. But if you look at the good, the benefit which comes from transporting by ship, then perhaps the location isn't going to be as local to where um, the waste happened to be created, or else perhaps we're into a hypothetical situation of needing um, uh, up to a dozen smaller plants instead of one significant one. I suppose then we're into hypotheticals of, en of the um, cost efficiency of and, and, and the viability of carbon capture. All of that taken into the round. Um, I would move, um, Mr Chairman, that um, contrary to recommendation, that the County Council supports the application um, insofar as it meets broadly and significantly um, the majority of, um, an overwhelming majority of the requirements in our own local plan policies. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Any officer comment? Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm just trying to switch the right buttons. We don't, there seems to be a time delay between me pressing the, uh, my mouse and appearing on the screen. Um, I hear what Councillor Ashton says, and uh, I think where we are with the um, proposal at the moment, and I think that's why we've uh, included Part B of the recommendation, the things that um, he was alluding to, it might be possible that the applicant provides more information to give us more comfort that those issues are being um, are able to be addressed but as the application stands at the moment with the information that we have been um, provided with we as officers do not feel that we're able to to come to that conclusion it might be that um, through a period of discussion and um, uh, and further meetings with the applicant they may provide more information but enable us as to uh, to, to, to get more comfortable with, with those um, policy conflicts that we've currently identified. And I say that's the reason why um, we've included the second part of the recommendation for um, when that information is forthcoming to have further conversations with yourself as chairman and vice chairman to see whether uh, uh, they are getting closer to, to meeting those policy objectives. Thank you for your comments. Having said that my vice chairman is proposing we should support the application, um, I as chairman, and we're thinking in terms of recommendation B on this, I'm going to propose the paper as printed that we don't support it. So uh, uh, this will make it quite interesting, um, uh, particularly when we get round to dealing with part B of the application. So uh, Council Mrs Austin, please. Thank you, Chairman. Sorry if I've played musical chairs this morning, but it's been difficult to see the screen on occasions. Um, I feel minded to support Councillor Ashton and are prepared to second his recommendation. I'm not going to be eloquent and, uh, how shall I say, technical, but I've given a lot of thought to this, a lot of notes during the course of this meeting. Um, I was concerned on reading the report about the inaccuracy regarding carbon capture, and our speaker from away has um, confirmed what we were led to believe, that in fact it does involve this carbon capture. If that can be used locally in the agri-foods business, which is on that same industrial estate, then that is surely a bonus. Um, the site, yes, it is designated for waste and recycling, but there's nowhere to say it is exclusively for Lincolnshire County Council. And if uh, somebody from away sees a business opportunity, then I think we should accept, you know, be pleased of that, provided there is no major environmental or other possible um, 
reason to be refusing it, because that is for the Secretary of State himself to decide. I find other thing, details in that report quite questionable. Um, for one hand, it says the land's been used for agricultural purposes, and then there's potentially identified contaminants, and then it uh, talks about semi-improved grassland. Well, I can't say I've noticed that semi-improved grassland yet. Um, you know, I do know this because it is within my borough and my county area, and I drive around my area. I drive around, rather sad, isn't it? I drive around the industrial estate. And I agree that not all aspects are as they might be, but I really think that the description of the site from an agricultural point of view was an over-exaggeration. It talks also, whilst we're on these sort of details, of a public right of way. It is extremely unattractive at the moment. It formerly skirted the former landfill site until the bank was breached in um, 2013. Um, it meanders around the industrial estate. I see this as an opportunity for that uh, right of way to be improved. Also, we, we've already had a mention of the cultural heritage. For non-local people, as regards Boston, Roman bank is not in the least Roman. It's thought possibly to be medieval. But of course, the site of the river has meandered over the centuries and now is in its current location and of course is basically canalized, so it's not going to move now. But when we think of how much it has moved over the century, but it, that bank has been disturbed from time to time, and as yet it hasn't revealed anything of much significance. So I think that I feel personally that any uh, cultural heritage with appropriate watching brief, um, then that could be, can be dealt with. Um, transportation using the river, well, this is a, is it a new initiative or is it almost turning the clock back many centuries when we use canals for these purposes? Ironically, on this same industrial estate is the Household Waste Recycling Centre, which actually brings waste not only from the borough of Boston, but from part of South Holland and part of East Lindsay to the site. It then is also the location for the waste transfer unit. And we, Lincolnshire County Council, are using HGVs, then bulk tankers to bring that up to North Highcombe. If someone chooses to come in and help reduce the carbon footprint elsewhere, then I don't think we should be refusing it. Climate change doesn't recognize county boundaries. Why can't we help elsewhere in the country and ultimately in the world where the situation is quite serious for many people? I could go on and on and on, but um, I suppose having sat for many years on the um, Environment and Economy Committee. We have in Boston the need for jobs. We have the chance for, with our local college for upskilling. And that is what is needed from the um, socioeconomic side, um, side of this application. I find this written report really very, very depressing. It is almost as though it's just looking for the negatives. 
if we can be confident in the process, then I see no reason why we should be sort of putting up the fences, saying no. I'm not Margaret Thatcher, I'm not going to say no, no, no. But, you know, we, we are open for business in Boston. And if this is acceptable um, by the people who understand the technology far better than I do, then I feel happy to go ahead along with it. So I shall be supporting Councillor Ashton. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Anything from you, Mr McBride? No? Okay, I'll move on to my next... Sorry, I'm just, sorry, I'm just uh, trying to get in there quick. Um, I think in terms of um, what Councillor Mrs Austin has said, uh, I, th I think that um, we do need to, to think about the responsibility that we have as waste plan authorities. So our requirement is to inform the plan inspector of the um, waste planning position within Lincolnshire. It's not saying that um, we're saying no to the development. Um, at the end of the day, that will be a decision, as Council Ashton said, that will be a balance that the plan inspector will uh, will um, basically make looking at all the evidence. But I do think that uh, it is our professional responsibility to make sure that the uh, planning inspector is well informed around the waste um, policy position within Lincolnshire. And I think that's, that's the duty of the authority to do that. Thank you very much, Councillor Ashley Morris, please. Thank you, Mr Chairman. This is just a brief point. Um, I understand from the um, information we've been given, there'll be a, an increased electricity and power um, to a considerable extent, which having been um, somewhat closer to the um, previous chairman of um, a leader of Boston Borough Council, I do know is a, is a massive problem, um, both for industry coming in so that we have the capacity to offer them the power and resources they need, and even down to um, a plan which was fully funded for putting in power points for charging electric cars in Boston, which obviously is part of the policy, um, you know, in, in, uh, with the cleaner energy. Um, that was an impossibility with the power supply that was available for, for Boston Borough or Boston Town. Now, this is a golden opportunity to say yes to something. I totally agree. It, it seems all sort of, let's be cautious, let's be negative. Let's be reassured by some of the information we've had that this is actually really a positive thing. It seems to address, it seems to tick every box but one. And I don't think that should be enough to actually knock it back. But certainly from, a, from the point of view of the town and power and attracting industry, which I can say hand on heart, Boston Borough are doing a brilliant job of. It needs backing and it needs something like this, which gives the reassurance to companies who want to come into the town that they're going to be serviced. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments. It's interesting that we've had uh, three speakers who have come from the Bostonish air type area um, uh, who have actually been semi supporting the application. Uh, the rest of the committee obviously haven't really commented so far. Uh, I note that the waste is going to come in by boat, by ship. Um, it's alluded that uh, perhaps it could come from different parts of the UK. So are we talking in terms of perhaps waste coming from London, as an example, down through uh, like they're doing at the moment, just taking, shipping the waste down the Thames? Or is it going to come from further abroad, such as, I don't know, uh, France, Germany, Denmark, wherever, and processing overseas waste. So it could be that we're actually importing from the EU rather than a UK waste. I don't know if that's relevant. Having said all that, Councillor Mrs Newton, you wish to comment? Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, th I think it's an interesting report, but um, I, I think the planning officer was right uh, to point out to us that it is against our local plan. Um, we don't always... Uh, we've got a local plan here that's um, recently been, well, fixed, and it runs for several years. 
but it does say in there is there a need and I think it was on page 129 or 130 I've written some notes down and we're talking about 1.2 million tonnes from outside Lincolnshire our plan was talking about the needs in Lincolnshire so I don't think we should decry the planning officer for pointing out that it is against our local plan if you decide not to accept his advice or the advice of the planning team that's a different matter but we've been given advice this morning um, and I'll say if we choose to ignore it that's up to us um, as long as we're fully aware that uh, there is not a demonstrable need um, to do this in Lincolnshire I'm not against investment in our county and I've said earlier about Lincolnshire's open for business I think we need to probably have a different reason to give the inspector when we're making comments. This will generate a lot of jobs, I'm for that. I'm for that in the county and in Boston, anywhere in our district, if, if it's not too far against the policy. So um, at the end of the day, our recommendation to him is going to take into account what we've been, the information we've been given this morning and does something outweigh the rest of the policy, I'm not sure. Thank you. Mr McBride, do you have any comments? I have no further speakers at this moment, so I'm soon going to put this to the vote, I think. Thanks, Chairman. So I'm assuming that's a no. So um, at this moment in time, I have it proposed... Uh, ah, Councillor Karen. Apologies, Chairman, I was waiting respectfully for a gap. Uh, <clears throat> I have two questions for Mr McBride, if, I, if it's in order to put them. Um, the first one, I, 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 it's been a running theme of this meeting, but I would like to go back to carbon capture. <clears throat> Forgive me. The uh, report in front of the committee states in terms and conclusively that this plant will not capture carbon. We have now heard that it will, so my first question is, does that in any way affect the conclusions which uh, should be drawn from the report? And the second concerns a point made on page 134 of the report under the heading changes to waste composition, which rightly says that uh, food waste is likely to be channeled away from general waste. <clears throat> it then goes on to say there will therefore be an increase in the proportion of plastics uh, within that waste. And it then says this could uh, lead to, uh, I beg your pardon, could push EFW impacts above landfill leading to unnecessary climate change emissions. And there are then various references to uh, some reports from Scotland and elsewhere. Could. It doesn't say will, and there isn't any evidence in there that it would. So can I ask for Mr McBride's comment on that? And also, is it a material consideration to take into account the alter alternative for landfilled plastic waste, which is fundamentally that over decades or perhaps hundreds of years, um, it will degrade and it will form microparticles which are likely to enter the environment where, as we well know, they will cause trouble. Thank you, Chairman. Mr McBride. Thank you, uh, Councillor Carrington, for those questions. In terms of carbon capture, um, I think clearly it is a new technology and it's something that uh, we are trying to... Uh, understand um, more than what we currently do. Uh, at the moment, in terms of, um, despite um, not wanting to dispute uh, what Mr Williams said this morning, I think that as it stands at the moment, the information that um, has been provided to us, we have um, doubts about the ability of this facility to offer a realistic carbon capture um, working in terms of how that's going to work in terms of the technology that will be necessary and whether that is going to be viable, whether uh, there will be sufficient um, carbon from the, um, from the project itself or whether there will be an expectation that other industries in the area might um, be also needed to, uh, to sort of provide their carbon to make that uh, um, that operation viable. So, as it stands at the moment, and this is something that um, no doubt we can have further discussions with the applicants about, 
we don't feel that we have that information to, to give us that comfort to be able to say that carbon capture is a realistic and achievable um, objective or part of this project. So it's certainly something that we need more information on and you know, the applicant may be able to provide that and then we can then review that and uh, maybe come to a, a different conclusion than, than we have done at the moment. But until we've seen that information, I would say that we still have, and I still have reservations about uh, the carbon capture element of this. Whilst it's a headline that the, the applicant is proposing, I think there needs to be a bit more sort of um, scrutiny below the surface to see whether that is realistic and uh, whether that is viable. That it's not something that's just sort of proposed at some future date that never actually comes on stream. So I think that's something we need to uh, look into in, into more detail. Um, in terms of your question about um, the, I suppose, energy from waste and whether that is um, more of a climate impact rather than rather than landfill. Um, what I would say is that um, we need to look carefully at the material that would be um, be used in this project. So if by providing this project or this facility, it means that there's an impact on um, on recycling because it encourages materials such as paper, card and plastics that might be able to be dealt with higher up the waste hierarchy than, um, than it currently would do if it was brought to this facility. Um, I think that's something that um, we also need to, uh, to, uh, to factor in. And um, the reasoning for that is that uh, uh, the government, through the DEPRA consultations at the moment, is looking at uh, trying to ensure that there is better consistency in terms of recyclables that are collected and then reused. So there is a danger at the moment that because all waste collection authorities don't collect the same material, um, residents aren't uh, always sure what they should put in their recycling uh, bins. They might um, put um, material in, in the wrong bin in terms of it going uh, into the sort of residual waste stream and then um, not being um, sort of being able to, uh, to, be, to be recycled. There's also the danger that people um, don't always um, put clean recyclables into their recycling bin. So again, it means that um, that material then can get contaminated, which means it can't be uh, um, used through the recycling process and then it gets sort of labelled as refuse derived fuel and then it's a sort of uh, um, material which this facility would be seeking to, uh, to use. So I think there are um, measures that are going to come in downstream that would enable more of the material that currently is envisaged to be brought to this facility uh, to be recycled and therefore uh, to be treated higher up the, the waste hierarchy. Not sure whether I've sort of answered your questions there. So happy to uh, for you to come back if um, you need more clarification. Uh, thank you, Mr. McBride. I'm I'm I'm, I'm grateful to that, Chairman. I find myself in a slightly difficult position here. I fully understand the need to look at qu on quite a narrow basis when we are replying as the local waste authority. I fully understand that. At the same time, other instincts, including professional ones, are saying to me, we have to look in a broader planning context. That is, as Mr. McBride has pointed out, the inspector's job, and it can be argued that it isn't ours. But I think there are some things that undermine the case as it currently stands. One is the interpretation of, of W1, uh, on which I, I tend to agree with, with, with Councillor Ashton. And I'm concerned that it may be using being used in a way which is not completely appropriate. And the second is the report before us, which it seems to me does have areas within it um, which could be clearer when they are brought to committee. Um, the matter of carbon capture, yes, I appreciate it's a new technology, but we have an absolutely clear statement in the report, uh, and then absolutely the opposite has been said to us by, by the applicant. And I feel that we don't necessarily know enough. Similarly, the issue of the waste stream, 
Um, Ms. Rye's very eloquent um, reply was nevertheless heavy on hypotheticals, but we have to deal with the evidence before us now. Um, we've got it proposed in both ways already. I'm, 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 I'm reluctant to bring a third element in, but I do wonder whether uh, it would be better if some of these issues were resolved or at least the reasons why they are not possible to be resolved. For example, why in detail carbon capture cannot be something we can be assured of could be clarified before the committee decided. I do feel that I'm being asked to vote on sort of a work in progress, and that leaves me a little bit uncomfortable, but I will listen to more experienced and wiser heads in this chamber. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you for your comments, Councillor Carrington. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it touches on carbon capture. Uh, surely, if that is a concern Mr McBride has, it is something we can put in the representation to the Secretary of State that we would ask that that is a condition of the development were it to go ahead to prevent uh, such, such a worry. Uh, and I must say, I do agree with uh, Councillor Ashton on uh, W1. Um, I've had similar experiences at a district level and unless something in my mind is stated in black and white that it is, this is only for Lincolnshire or it's only for a given purpose, to me that, that policy is silent because it doesn't state categorically either way. Uh, so I certainly endorse Councillor Ashton's point on that. Um, I wonder if Mr McBride uh, would wish to come back on the possibility of writing to the Secretary of State or the Inspector in our response and requesting that uh, carbon cap should be a condition of discharge. Mr McBride. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, as I say, this is a ongoing process. So whilst um, it was felt necessary to bring a report to the committee at this stage with the information that we currently have, and given that um, as officers we had raised some particular concerns about the, um, the information that uh, the applicant had provided to us or has provided um, in the process, there is, ability, there is an ability, and this is something that we will continue to do, is to meet with the applicant. They are now aware of the issues that, um, that have been raised through our relevant representations and that there is an opportunity for um, the applicant to now uh, provide a response to those concerns with more detail and then that will give us an opportunity to decide whether that information is sufficient for us to um, to change our view on um, on on the various issues particularly carbon capture or whether we still uh, maintain that uh, that concern so I think that um, you know, I understand Councillor Carrington's sort of point that uh, um, you know, we've been asked to, to, um, to look at a number of scenarios, but uh, I think it's important to recognise that what we are looking at today doesn't necessarily need to be our final um, observations to the um, planning inspector. So there is an, um, an ability over the next um, month or so for us to have meetings with the applicant and we've already had one already to um, to sort of confirm the issues that we've identified uh, that are of concern to us and the applicant is now working to a response to those issues and it might be as I say that we get more comfort when we have that information um, but as I say at the moment we're only able to uh, um, work on the information that we have and as it stands I think it would be difficult for us to um, request a condition or as it's called in this process a requirement that is imposed on the development consent order um, to require um, carbon capture to be a, um, a requirement of the scheme until we're confident that that is actually achievable and at the moment I don't think that we are so for that reason, I don't think it is possible for us to ask for that requirement or that condition at this time. Thank you. We've been debating this for nearly, well, well over 90 minutes, and uh, I think we're soon going to bring this to a close. Uh, however, I do have a new speaker to introduce to the debate, and then I'm going to allow Councillor Ashton to come back. 
and then I am very soon after that hopefully going to put it to a vote. So, Councillor Skinner. Thank you very much, Chairman. I, I just wanted uh, Mr McBride to confirm that the uh, outputs of sub this sort of plant is actually defined by the Environmental Agency. And, and really, it's not really a planning issue. It's actually something that's defined and what they can and can, cannot do. Um, the, other, the other thing I would just point out, nobody's mentioned so far, this is a national infrastructure project. That brings with it national infrastructure and some, might even protect some parts of our coastline. Who knows? Thank you. Very bright. Yeah, in terms of the Environment Agency's role, um, it, so it will have a, um, a requirement for an environmental permit which would deal with the air quality type issue um, that um, the material that comes out of the, uh, um, basically out of the stack um, to make sure that there isn't any uh, um, contraventions around um, air quality and that it's um, in accordance with the um, required regulations for, um, uh, for a, an incinerator plant. Um, I'm not sure in terms of the question around sort of, um, feedstocks, because there's still um, a role of a planning process to ensure that uh, um, the, um, the process examines um, the, the waste feedstocks that would come to the plant to make sure that it is um, acceptable um, from, from, from a planning perspective. So, sorry, perhaps I didn't understand the question in full. No, I, I'll rest my points at that place. Thank you. you. Right, I'll now move on to Vice Chairman, Councillor Ashton. Very briefly, because I appreciate I spoke at great length earlier, um, simply to say that it um, feels from um, what we've just heard from Mr McBride that actually insisting on carbon capture wouldn't be acceptable, um, essentially because the technology still remains too new, too untried, that even though four years, five years ago in our local plan we put in there um, carbon capture um, or carbon reduction, carbon capture as being um, something we wish to encourage, even though we've got an applicant um, saying that they um, are really keen to progress this, it would actually be unreasonable of us to insist on that being a deal breaker, um, simply because it is too new. Um, I would, however, if my seconder would support me, um, include in there an informative um, to our decision that um, it is that we would expect to see the inclusion of carbon capture proposals as part of the final application providing that they can be made technically feasible if that is as far as we reasonably can go um, and I will simply just draw um, back I'm grateful um, that Councillor Carrington's um, interpretation on W1 um, is similar to my own that that in, in respect of our waste policy and our own identified need for a rising from Lincolnshire, the fact that we didn't um, identify this need back in 2016 doesn't mean that that need um, doesn't exist or didn't exist or certainly doesn't exist now. And I would suggest um, somewhere in the order of half a billion pounds worth of investment um, will probably be because the company um, behind this, the applicant, has identified a need um, rather than it really wants a pretty piece of infrastructure on the banks of the haven. Thank you. Thank you. Any comments, Mr McBride? No, Chairman, this is first. Right. Well, thank you. Okay, so I am therefore going to... Uh, look at my paperwork. Uh, oh, Councillor Mrs. Austin. I think I was asked by um, Councillor um, Ashton to um, agree to his, uh, what did you call it, informative. Thank you. So I will now move to my paperwork. And uh, currently I have the papers printed, proposed by myself and not seconded. However, I do have a proposal proposed by Councillor Ashton, seconded by Councillor Mrs Ashton, that uh, Ashley Morris, cracking up, um, Mrs Austin seconded, I'm sure. No, not Morris, 
I'm sure I'm looking around so um, that we are minded to be supportive of this. So if you'd like to reiterate your statement so that everyone has it for the minute. Um, the, the county council support the um, application for development sent um, and includes an informative um, that we would like to see um, carbon capture if that is technically feasible. I'm happy that we include um, B, um, which is if there is effectively further information, then um, we are able to deal with it. Okay, seeing no further speakers, uh, is there any officer comment? Uh, Mr. Close. Uh, Chair, just to know, um, Councillor Smith was out of the room for a period of the officer's report, so I'm afraid won't be able to take part in the vote today. Okay, uh, is there any comment from Mr McBride before I take it to the vote? No, thank you, Chair. If that is then carried, just to make sure that uh, it is fully minuted to, to understand the alternative um, recommendation that, uh, or resolution that will uh, uh, then need to be communicated to the, um, to the planning inspectorate. Thank you. Okay, so we have a proposal and seconded. Proposed, uh, I'm buzzing away here. Um, so I will therefore put it to the vote. We have it minuted, clearly. Yes, I'm getting a nod. So all in favour of the proposal by Councillor Ashton, please show now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's eight, four, against one and an abstention has got to be councillor ash uh, councillor smith on the basis he wasn't in in the meeting for the whole debate thank you very much well that was an interesting debate um and quite a long one um it's good to see that we are cohesive as a, a, a meeting and going forwards so i don't see any further business at the moment however i will remind people that there is a site visit on Thursday going to Greatford, uh, meeting at Greatford at 10.30 and leaving county offices at 9.30. It would be useful if all those who are intending to get on the bus in Lincoln could perhaps indicate now so we know if we are going to be. So if you've got a note of that, you know who we're waiting for on Thursday morning. Uh, otherwise, I expect the rest of the committee, if they can attend, to meet us at the other end. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry it's run on a little bit further than normal. Uh, safe journey.